What's up, everybody? My name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. In case you ever wondered what I rushed through before the streams, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> I somehow, uh, I always have like a time in mind for these streams, and then, uh, and then, you know, things, <laughs> I get busy and lose track of time, and then, uh, like one minute before the stream, I realize I haven't scheduled it, there's no thumbnail. <laughs> And I haven't told anybody about the upcoming stream. Um, so yeah, today um, I posted on Instagram that I was streaming at 5, and at 5.01 I said, oh shit, uh, let me just throw the stream up. Um, I threw the stream up and it was private for some reason. YouTube just, I don't know, does random things. And it was private for a while. <laughs> and then I, I realized there was nobody coming because of a reason, and I fixed it. And then you guys came, and here you guys are. All 29 of you, thank you for coming. Uh, let me get some windows moved around here. This is gonna be a, um, this is gonna be more of a chill stream, less of a planned, uh, less of a, you know, less of one of my official sort of streams, and more of a, um, this is going to be more similar to a patron-only stream. Uh, I do stream every single day. Uh, every single time I stream, during the stream, it is public. But then after the stream, um, sometimes they become unlisted and they're linked only on the Patreon page. Um, so that those guys have some, some, some more, you know, exclusive stuff. Um, but I don't want to put everything behind the paywall, so I, I, hope, it's, uh, I hope it's fair that that while I'm streaming, it's open to everybody, and then some days, you know. Basically, like, Tuesdays, Thursdays, usually those ones will be Patreon only. Um, I'm going to leave this one here right now um, public. But, yeah, I do much less professional rando streams. Sometimes they're from the PS4. Sometimes it's me playing SnowRunner with friends. Um, but, yeah. If you want daily streams from me, all you gotta do is join the Patreon page. It's three whole dollars a month. You can do it. That's only $36 a year. Come on. Come on. 365 streams. Or th <coughs> That's what happens when you shill too hard. <laughs> you, get, you get choked. <laughs> you get choked by uh, the invisible anti-shill um 365 streams for 36 dollars i think that's gonna be my new shill that's that's pretty good isn't it although there's no way in hell i'm gonna stream every day this year but i'm gonna try damn it um chomper tagged me random fpv tagged me old greek meeting uh gel captain tagged me brian ladmeron and dauntless What's up, fools? If you guys want to talk directly to me, all you got to do is type Ciotti FPV. It will light your comment up in orange. And then I'll know you're talking to me. Gary Butler's in Liverpool. I know how to say it right because I watch BBC television a lot. Uh, Liverpool. Oh, no, I can't do it. Don't. I don't do accents because I find it to be very... I just feel like it's more insulting than funny. It's only funny to us cheeseburger people. Um... And it's, I don't know, I, a lot of times when people, when I see other people do accents and they're not really good at them, it's very cringy. Um, and I'm not really good at accents, so I don't do it in fear of it being cringy. What's up, Z? What's up, Rob or Robbie from Belgium? <laughs> good night from Belgium. <laughs> well, you can watch the replay tomorrow, brother. Uh, let me get some more beautiful copyright-free epidemic sound music going here. Let's go... Oh, great. The kids that just scream constantly are outside. Awesome. What about this? Staff picks. There we go. That's a bad staff pick right there. That's what that is. Um, epic and eccentric. No. No. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Getting some getting some jams going. Uh, we're going to start the, um, the Moon Goat build today. Oh, wait, no. Oh, wait, yeah. Oh, look at that. I didn't even realize that I, uh, I had the, the, this window. Maybe that's why I put this window on this side, so I can point to it, because I'm actually pointing to 
the desk. What's up, Seabird? What's up, Guillermo? Guillermo sent a meme. Great. Here we go. <laughs> Checking it out, Guillermo. I'm, you, you got my uh, you got my my attention. Um, General, there's Guillermo. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Looks like Joshua might have just posted something. Posted something. Uh... Ah, that's a good. Joshua does so much of a better job than I do at at uh, at posting uh, somewhat political stuff without just saying "fuck you, Nazis." Um, I just don't have the patience. I, I really don't. I, I, I just... Um, I posted something earlier today. That basically said, fuck you, Nazis. <laughs> and, um, and uh, yeah, after 10 or 15 minutes, I realized that I was just being insane. And I took it down. Uh, that's That happens a lot with me. <laughs> I get really upset, and I, I, do, I do something emotional. And then slowly but surely, my... Uh, my, my um, nice person brain turns back on and goes, nah, yeah, maybe. And then I take a good look at what I've posted and typically delete it. <laughs> um, but I don't know, man. I, I don't know. At this point, um, after what happened, if you're not willing to denounce, if, if you were a Trump supporter and, and you're not willing to denounce that and no longer be a Trump supporter, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what else is, is needed to... Uh, to change your mind that the dude's a Nazi and, and a terrorist. Sorry. Uh, facts is facts. Um, but I'm going to move on. Everybody's allowed to have their own opinion. Um, some people have the wrong opinion, but uh, whatever. Moon Goat indeed, Patrick. It's time. I'm just trying to get some goddamn background music going here. That You, you can tell if there's... Um, you can tell the 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 kind of hangout streams by if I put music on in the background. Um, so yeah, that's what today is gonna be. I just gotta find a little a dreamy mood. We're gonna do we're gonna go epidemic sound dreamy mood, I think. Um, and yeah, Joseph Beg, be good. All right. Let's get this up here, and we got that going, we got this going, we got this going, and holy shit, everybody's talking to me in the chat. T-Bird says, hey, Guillermo says to send a meme. Z says, I'm working on the prototype stuff at the moment. What prototype stuff? Stuff, Z. Um, Chomper FPV says, I'm cooking tonight, watching you. Nice, brother. Uh, Andrew Kelly in the house. Andrew, um, pick a time. Pick a time in a day. Uh, Andrew hired me over on Fiverr, which you can get to by going to cidfpv.com if you're interested. Um, Andrew hired me to help him uh, tune and to just sort of educate him during that tuning process um, with a, uh, he bought my one hour package on Fiverr. Um, and in an hour, we're gonna be able to get a lot done. Um, I actually just did an hour long session with somebody um, for tuning uh, yesterday, maybe the day before, um, and it was really, really good. An hour is is a long time when it's one on one, um, as long as you're willing to like listen. And one of the cool things about Skype is that it will let you record the whole session, so you can sort of just you know hire me for an hour, uh, figure out all the questions that you want to ask, and then just rapid fire questions, record the whole thing, and you've got like this hour long one on one session. Um, and yeah, I think that has a lot of value and so has, so have a couple folks and I would love to work with you guys next because, um, uh, Andrew Kelly is going to be the, the, la I'd like a run. I'd like a bunch of people all at once last week. Um, and then it's been kind of dead since then. So uh, Andrew Kelly is going to be the last appointment that I have scheduled. Next one could be you. CIDFPV.com, and then there's a Fiverr button. I've got a bunch of things that I want to help you do, things that I think that I'm really good at um, that 
I would like to help other people get good at because that's I love doing that. Um, I realized later in my I realized in my like late twenties that I really enjoyed instructing and and teaching, uh, which pisses me off because I I chose not to be a music major in college because I didn't think I would like I I didn't <laughs> I don't love children <laughs> and. I knew that about myself, and I said, well, no, I don't want to teach. You know, music major means you're a teacher, a music teacher, since, like, one in a million actually gets to be a music performer. Um, and then, yeah, five or so years later, I realized, wait a second, I love to teach people. I, I, I Here's the thing, though. I think that I love teaching adults. <laughs> I, still, I, I still think maybe I made the, uh, the right decision. Um, in uh, yeah, in not pursuing that, I now also have the adapters that I need to get this laptop going. Um, so yeah, this stream will soon be in the twentieth century or the twenty-first century. <laughs> um, on Streamlabs with all the fancy stuff, the the exclamation point stuff, the. I don't know, all the fun stuff that you see all the other successful streamers doing. <laughs> um, because uh, Streamlabs actually works on this laptop. The 13-year-old the, the um, desktop that I've been streaming on this whole time um, is too old. The, the, it's so old that it, it can't update system software current enough to use Streamlabs or to use... Um, this is what I'm really excited about with the laptop, um, is I've got to start using this thing. Uh, which is a uh, USB um, RF adapter thing. Uh, so I'll be able to switch to a scene that looks at this, and then I'll be able to walk outside and fly, and you guys will get it full screen, um, or I can fly around the house or whatever. So this is going to be super fun. And I'm also realizing that since this is all going to be on the laptop, um... I can go out and fly if I ever go out and fly again, <laughs> um, because the weather has just been miserable, and I just I'm having a really hard time finding the time to go fly um, now that I'm like really hitting this hard to try to get this thing to a point where it's um, where I can pay all of my bills. Um, so yeah, and that's fine. That's totally fine. But I am gonna I have to figure out a way to get out and fly some more. Um, let's keep your coat on. Uh, so that's going to be cool. I'm excited about that. And um, it'll be interesting to bring this laptop with me, set this up as a hotspot, and try to do like little streams from out in the field. That'll be interesting. Um, getting caught up in the chat. Andrew Kelly says, good evening, ready for Fiverr session later. Uh, how do I send you my Skype ID? I sent Discord ID in Fiverr. Awesome. Um, uh... Let me get that going, and uh, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to send you a link um, to Skype and uh, that you can just click on and it'll, it'll open the Skype session. Um, I'll open the Skype session, I'll send you the link, and then, and then we'll jump on. I guess we'll do that um, after this. We'll do that after this stream or tomorrow. I'm, I'm free tomorrow, Andrew. Uh, it's already 5.30 here, so for you it's probably, what, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9? Yeah, so this stream is not going to be over until really late your time. We, we could totally do it tonight. Um, just let me know. Or tomorrow. i got tons of time tomorrow. Uh, what else do we have? Weirdo with a skateboard dropping in for a bit because I'm determined to sleep more <laughs> before 2 in the morning today. Uh, Huckleberry is building a 3-inch UL, uh, I'm assuming that means ultralight, build while watching. Very cool. Uh, Brian Ladbraw says, uh, so have you still not actually flown the GoPro? I haven't even built it, so yeah, I've definitely not flown it. Um, uh, Brian loves it. iFlight F7 sucks sex. 20 by 20 stack is holding up good. Uh, 50 batteries and 8 crashes once into a tree. Good to hear it. Keep the uh, keep the durability feedback coming, guys, because I, 
you got to get like 7,000 pieces of durability feedback before it becomes even remotely uh, uh, realistic. All right, Andrew, I just um, I just messaged you over on Discord. I'm going to leave my Discord opened for a change so that I don't forget about the message <laughs> that I just sent you because Discord is not um, in my normal rotation of, of, of social media stuff. I still haven't figured out a way to get it into that rotation. Um, maybe I will someday. I'm trying. I, I swear I'm trying. Alexander Romanenko says, The world is flat, don't you know? <laughs> Weirdo the Skateboard says, uh, And was surprised it would be harder for me to break into my local uh, co-op and nick a meal deal. Uh, than it was for them to get into the White House. <laughs> Espander says, hey. Drone Pilot says, hey. Z, uh, newbie drone prototype stuff. Ah, very cool. Um, drone Pilot says, I'm building a B7 inch quad, even though I tuned my quads. I actually was thinking about uh, getting you to help me. Uh, what's your rate per hour? Basically, 80 bucks an hour, uh, Drone Pilot. Uh, and yeah, it's all, at the moment, it's all run over on Fiverr. I'm trying to get. Um, I'm trying to get some reviews over on Fiverr so that I look a little bit more legitimate. Um, so at the moment, yeah, I am I am trying to keep everything on Fiverr. Um, but yeah, I mean down the road, if you guys don't want to go through Fiverr, I'll I'll um, yeah, we can just do PayPal or whatever. But uh, yeah, if uh, if you guys are interested, please do me a huge favor and, and just go through Fiverr. I, I I I put some good questions over there. I typed everything out. I give you some. It'll just kind of get your 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 brain going as to as to what sort of questions that you can and should ask and yeah it's it's just good to, to kind of get you thinking um because you know you typically don't get to to talk directly to people that really really know what they're doing in in certain parts of of your hobbies and um there's all kinds of uh things that you're probably gonna f forget to ask afterwards you know what i mean um and I don't want you to have to uh, feel that regret of forgetting to ask stuff, as I have many a time. Big Macs tonight, watch those fries, man. <laughs> Dragonfly, guys. <laughs> Zach says, don't breathe the French fries deal. Uh, Kristen is at uh, her friend Katie's place and um, for a while. So I got the house all to myself. I can scream and yell and scream, fuck! I do have to feed the kitten at some point here, though. 531, I gotta go feed the kitten now. Uh, let me give you guys something to watch. I will be right back, and then I swear to God, we will start the moon goat belt. <laughs> wait, wait, no, let me get caught up on chat. Broccoli is here. What's up, Broccoli? Glad to have you. Cold and ugly out here also. It looks like Sleepy Hollow every day. Dude, I, it's, yeah, I mean, I guess because it, it, it is winter and all, but, um, I don't know. I feel like this has been a particularly ugly winter, or maybe just the world is ugly right now, and I'm... Blaming the weather on it. Um, awesome to have you, Brock. Thanks for stopping by, my man. The, the beginning FPV says, I know you like the 22,000 KV 0802 motors. I actually like the 25,000. 22,000 are pretty good, though. Um, that they don't sell anymore. Um, I saw iFlate makes a set of 0802 22,000s on Amazon. Uh, just thought I'd tell you. Um, beginning, which, which ones... Uh, which ones aren't sold anymore? So my favorites are, uh, my, my absolute favorite 65mm uh, Tiny Whoop motor at the moment is the Happy Model 0802 25,000 kV, um, which last time I checked is still for, if, if that motor is no longer for sale, I definitely want to know about it. So um, if, if, if you guys know something I don't, let me know. Um, 22,000 kV is also really good. Uh, Beta FPV makes them and iFlight makes them. Uh, I have both. I have yet to to head to head them. Um, the um, the the what I like what I do, the only thing I don't like about the twenty five thousand kV is that it doesn't have bearings. It has bushings instead of bearings, just because the motor is so small. Um, iFlight and Beta FPV have found a bearing small enough, so their twenty two thousand kV motors are on bearings, which is a good thing. That that's going to be more efficient. It's going to be smoother. All the good things. Um, and 22,000 kV is, it's pretty good. It's, it's, um, 
it's 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 way 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 better than eighteen thousand and twenty thousand kV. Like it almost feels like it. They almost feel like they're twenty three thousand kV. Um, uh, but at the same time, where the hell's the thing? There it is. Uh, but at the same time, it's I don't know. I uh, it's. I wish they were like 24,000 kV. Like, the 25s are so good. The 25s are just, like, oh, man, they're so good. Espander with two great British pounds, which I think is three-ish dollars, a little drop in that health insurance ocean. <laughs> Thank you, brother. We're going to go with a three. We're going to go three out of a million dollars. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Uh, Frank is here. What's up, Frank? And then Z says, uh, I've been doing product design for them for a bit. No shit. I did not know that, Z. That is super cool. Um, I mean, you've been around for a little bit, so you probably know my thoughts on, on some of their items. Uh, if I have any specific thoughts, I will try to remember to let you know. Um, that's very cool. I like, uh, I, I love... Meeting people that are like you know have little little ins and and so I can just like if I have like a good I mean my my main my main ideas for newbie drone are to I love newbie drone so hard um, but I really wish they would get with the program on the 0802s um, and make twenty two thousand or better yet twenty five thousand kV or twenty four thousand or just the high because I want to run the acro B boards and I want to tell everyone to run the acro B boards because they are the best boards but having to direct solder motors is absolutely asinine and the only newbie drone 0802s are 18,000 and 20,000 and that's just not enough they, they that those are like long range tiny whoop motors and tiny whoops are not long range rigs in my opinion <laughs> since you know can't do any kind of long range <laughs> since they go one mile an hour. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it is what it is. Th those are the main things that are just driving me absolutely insane about newbie drone right now. Um, and it, it's more, it, I, I'm, I'm taking it out. I'm, I'm unfairly taking it out on newbie drone. Um, I'm, I'm frustrated that there isn't a, a, a 1S uh, Tiny Whoop AIO that. Um, that checks all the boxes that you can plug the standard motors into that has um, either a VTX built in uh, or a crossfire receiver built in. Like there's, there's a pretty, I don't know. I think it's a pretty basic set of, of check boxes that I'm looking to have ticked. I, I didn't, I don't think I'm asking for too much. Um, but I guess I am because nobody makes it. Um, I think once somebody does make it, they're going to sell a lot of them now because I, I feel like my requirements are very similar to many other people who, who I don't know, fly, <laughs> right? Like, like I'm, I'm not, my set of requirements is just to have like the ultimate tiny whoop and, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Alexander says, burn it all down. Start with the moon goat. <laughs> Z says, uh, anything over 25,000 kV in the 0703 and 02, uh, 0802 size is really hit and miss because of the volume. Really? Oh, 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 right, right, right. I, I was thinking stator volume. Um, uh, well, see, here, here's where I'm, I'm actually going to disagree with you, Z, and I'm going to disagree with you because most people are on Betaflight, and Betaflight 4.2 has... Uh, uh, motor scaling now so in my opinion the only motor the only 0802 that should be being sold at this point is i mean screw 25,000 let let's really go for it and do 28,000 right or 30,000 and then we'll just scale it down and and everything will be so much better because you'll literally be able to say like hey are you a beginner scale this down to to 60% you're getting a little bit better? Cool, scale it up to 70%. Oh, you're getting a little bit better? Scale, right? So, um, and then once you're really good, you can motor scale based on the payload, right? You can you can have a specific PID tune for um, when you're carrying around an Insta360 Insta Go, which is something that the, the newbie drone rigs do really, really well, right? Newbie drone at the moment has the best 
setup for carrying the Insta360 Go that I've been able to find. And I think that's a game changer. Like, flying a 65mm Tiny Whoop with an Insta360 Go is nuts. Like, you can fly just the, the, the fully stabilized footage that you can get out of it, shooting gaps that are this big. Like, when you watch that back, like, it it gives you that, like, fizz in your, in your gentleman's region. Um, because it's, it's not something that we've been able to do before, and it's really, like, it almost has, like, that feeling of, like, the first time you saw FPV, and you were like, holy shit, a camera can, can go from zero to a hundred in half a second? That, I've never seen that before, right? Um... Yeah, shooting a gap this big in full stabilized HD, it's like it. You know what it is? It's that same moment when when we all watched the uh, the Muscle Beach video, right? Because that was the I think that was a seventy five, but it went through those rings that were like this big. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I I'm, uh, I'm I'm frustrated, but uh, I, I'm I'm just trying to be patient. Trying my best to be patient. Um, <clears throat> because I know that this stuff will all come, I just want it right now because I want to start booking more shit, um, doing this stuff. Um, Z also says, uh, it has to do with repeatability of the KV measurements that come from the manufacturers. Really? Don't you just, I mean, don't you just wind it and it's just, like, for example, what is it? It's, I think it's less, it's less wines for more KV, so shouldn't they, or vice versa, but, so shouldn't they just be able to throw an extra wind on, or, and if that doesn't fit on the stator poles, then they just drop the, um, they just increase or decrease the, uh, the, the gauge of the copper, and then just, that's my understanding of, of, of how you, you dial KV into a motor, it's just how many winds it has, basically, um, and the, uh, and it also has to do with the thickness of the copper. Um, and yeah, like if, if happy model is able to do it, isn't it, can't, can't we, I mean, like, can't I literally just look at the happy model motor and see how many wines there are? Um, and the newbie drone just copies it. I would think the newbie drone motors also look, the, the bell design is identical to the happy models. So it feels to me like they're even made in the same place, right? If they weren't, wouldn't the bell design be at least a little bit different? I would think, um, I'm not super convinced that there aren't, like, I know Emacs makes their own motors. Um, I'm not convinced that, like, Emacs has a plant, and then probably T-Motor has a plant, and, like, that's it. And then everybody just gets gets their motors manufactured from those two spots. Because, like Z said, volume is the issue, right? Like, we're a niche within a niche within a niche within a niche. Um, more wines is less KVI. I had it backwards. Thanks, Brian. Um, yeah, so can't they just take their existing motors and just throw, uh, and just take a wind out and increase the, uh, um, oh, I guess, I, I bet you they don't want to retool. I bet you they, but, so that, that's the problem. That, that was one of the big things that, um, that happened when we went to 6S, when we went from 4S to 6S and 5-inch rigs. Um, let's talk about all this while I'm, while I'm doing the build. Um... Yeah, one of the things that happened... Let me move the mic, guys. And... Okay. We're safe. Um, yeah, when... When uh, when we... When when we very... F the, the very first, like, 4A into 6S, right? Um, the... Uh, oh, shit! Bricked FPV. Good call. Good call. Good call. Thank... <laughs> Thank God for you guys. The fucking cat would be out. I mean, he would just come in crying. Here's a, uh, here's something. Here's me flying around somewhere at some point for some reason. Hopefully I don't do anything sketchy. <laughs> um, oh, there's, there's sketchiness potential in this. Oh, no, you guys have seen this. No, that's no fun. Let's go here. Oh, yeah. Flying with Joshua on Christmas. Uh, Christmas 2019. Here you guys go. Um, F5. Oh boy. Look at this fucking guy. 
Oh yeah, that's the one I want to play for you guys. Here we go. I'll be right back. Let me go uh, feed the kitten with his crazy cocktail of uh, pancreas powder and other various pains in the ass. <laughs> I think this is when I was like showing Bardwell this spot. It looks like he's in the goggles, so this is going to be me like giving him a tour. Beer back. I'm surprised that doesn't happen more often, where I, I play a video, walk out of here, and don't get back in time for the end of the video. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, no, it's just, uh, yeah. Remy Tim got it. What's up, Daniel? How are you, brother? Um, okay, real quick. Uh, Z says, at this size, it has less to do with the number of wines but the volume limitations of the wire and the volume. Really? Interesting that things change so much with the, I mean, it makes sense. Like as things miniaturize with these motors, it's like, uh, yeah, tiny little changes make a, make a big difference. That's a shame, man. That, that, that's a shame that they can't do that because I just can't, I, I can't rec like with how much better the, the happy model 25,000s are, I, I just can't I can't recommend the the newbie drone setup to anybody. It's it's just it just doesn't feel good in the air. I mean it it, it feels okay in the air for like a beginner, um, but yeah for anybody that wants some some good performance, I mean it's just like it's night and day. Um, dude, if if you haven't tried those Happy Model twenty five thousands yet, try them. You'll you'll like. I, there's like an acceptable margin of error that I'll t like. There's an acceptable margin of like performance loss that I will take um, to not buy crappy model stuff. But this is way outside of that. Like th this is a um, this is a performance difference that's impossible to uh, to to ignore. Unfortunately, um, hopefully they figure out a way. I I, I really do hope that because. Um, Horsepower is like the thing, in my opinion, with Tiny Whoops that really holds them back from being able to do some some incredibly fun maneuvers um, that 
you know, a lot of you guys have seen me do on, on Whoop Wednesdays, um, just in a tiny little apartment. Um, I can't imagine a, uh, a lightweight Whoop out in the wild on those motors. It would be so much fun. Or not out in the wild, but like in a, in a bigger, in a bigger house, in a bigger, well, in a house, period. Uh, Alexander says, uh, Tommy was discussing how some motors have minimum windings to fun function. Wonder if that applies here. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just, uh, how, I don't know. <laughs> I just keep, uh, going back to like, how the hell did Happy Model do it? Like ha if Happy Model did it, even if it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> It's, um, yeah, what do I do? What do I do, you know? I want something that performs good, and I, and I want something that, um, and there, there's a, and there's a product that has been, like, extreme, like, I, I, I assumed that the Happy Model 0802 2500s would be garbage, and they would just fall apart, but they've been completely bulletproof, and they make an amazing amount of power, and it's just, it's, it's like bananas how good they are. Um, and yeah, as much as I want to like, as, as much as I'm, you know, I, I would prefer to support newbie drone, I can't leave performance on the table like that. How the hell do you get this top plate off? I guess you have to pull this. No, it looks like I can, looks like I can maybe just pull this rear... Um, if you guys didn't know, when the, when the rear bolt is obscured by the TPU, don't like, don't like yank on it, you can just do that. You can just push it, parallelogram that bitch sideways like that, and it, it like, it wants to bend that, that way, you know what I mean? Like, doing this, like, it, it doesn't want to bend that way. Doing that, it, uh, you can feel it, like, it just doesn't care about, um, bending to the side like that. Thanks for hanging, weirdo. <clears throat> I will uh, talk to you tomorrow, brother. Uh, weirdo, can you... Uh... Oh, wait, no, I got it written down. Three o'clock tomorrow. Good to go. Um, the beginning FPD says they still have the Happy Model 0802 25000 on Amazon. Very cool. Uh, but no bearing, just a double C-clip. Yeah, the beginning. Um, which I also... I also assumed that I would have a problem uh, with them being not bearing motors, but I haven't. They've been totally fine. Like, like, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, it's just, I'm like, come on, dude. Like, die. Cheap, shitty, horrible, happy model motors. Like, die so that I can say your shit. <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying to support happy model. Come on, man. <laughs> Uh, Christ. What I really, I, I was really hoping, um, somebody had, uh, somebody caught the, the tinywhoop.com, uh, Danger Onesies, which are 0802 27,000s, which I've been dying to get my hands on, um, and somebody caught them up for sale and messaged Jesse and said, yo, Jesse, um, siati has been talking about these constantly on his stream, um, trying to get a set, can you maybe hold the set for him? And um, Jesse told that person, "Yeah, totally. Uh, just have him message me." And then I and then I messaged him, and he just hasn't been getting back to me. Like I, I messaged him, and he got back to me like three weeks later, and he said, "Yeah, I have him." And I said, "Great. I, I like really need him um, as soon as you possibly can. Um, just tell me how to how to pay you for him." And uh, that was like it, it's been like three or four weeks since then, and I've. I've messaged him a couple times to try to remind him, but um, to no avail. So, I don't know. I don't know if he's just super busy, or if he doesn't check his Facebook messages, or if I did something to piss him off at some point. Um, all of those things are potential. <laughs> like, each one of those things has potential to be the reason. Um, Jesse's an amazing dude. I'm sure he's just super busy. I hope, I really, really, really hope that I didn't uh, do or say anything to piss him off um, because I love the guy. I, I love what he's done for the hobby 
um, and just who he is as a as a human being. So I I, I really hope that I didn't uh, do or or say something to to kind of ruin that relationship. That um, yeah, not that we really like have a relationship. I've I've only ever talked to the guy like five or six times at you know random like events that the two of us have just happened to both be at. So yeah, I don't like actually have a a, a relationship with the guy. Other than, yeah, just telling him, like, yo, keep going, brother. You're doing amazing things, and I love it. And you're a fucking credit to the community, and we don't deserve you. Maybe he got sick of me saying that to him every time he met me. <laughs> I'm sure it's not malicious. Uh, Z says, bearings suck on tiny motors. They don't make high RPM bearings cheap enough to warrant, uh, to warrant use on whoop motors. They would be like uh, 15 bucks a motor. Um, that's interesting. I um, I have not put enough... I've not put more than like three or four batteries through the uh, the bearinged uh, 0802s that I've got. But I was kind of wondering the same thing about those bearings because the little balls inside there must be the size of like <laughs> atoms. Hey, look at this! Hey! 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 My BQE order came in. Uh, there's gonna be two more rip squeak builds. Hey! Hey! Micro fans. There's a chance that uh, I'll be working with Tomo Quads on a frame. Uh, Tomo Quads is one of the OG. Uh, micro frame manufacturers who have uh, they're one of the only ones that haven't like just kind of they've made consistently good frames um, and they they make frames based on like they make good quality frames and then try to make money later let's say that um, it's not just about cranking out frames for them to just make as much money as possible. It's about making good quality frames. Um, and, uh, that's, those are the types of companies that I'm interested in. Um, and they posted on their, uh, Facebook group, which I've been a member of forever, uh, saying, Hey, what, what do you guys want to see next from us? And I posted and said, and I, I posted a reply and said, I'd love to work together on something, let me know. And they, uh, Tomo replied and said, what are you thinking? And I said, how about, <clears throat> how about we fill the void in the micro world for a school bus slash alien three inch rig, but one that ticks all the check boxes and is, is actually a good frame that's going to protect the motors and be strong and have removable arms and all these things that for some reason nobody's been able to do. Um, and I'm waiting to hear back. So maybe, I mean, th that would basically be like when I tell you guys that I've worked on micro frames and I've poured a lot of time in and then they've not come to be most of the time that's been poured in has been poured into exactly that design. Um, so I would kind of be able to just send Tomo a link to a, a 30 page long Google doc that I've got, um, specking out this whole thing and they could probably just like hopefully um so we'll see we'll see if, if a they have any interest in it um b if uh yeah they're willing to work together but uh our current and awesome three inch freestyle option is right here um these are the bqe rip squeaks and um we now have nine by nine or 12 by 12 motor mount arms for the BQE Rip Squeak Micro. And that's a big deal because the tw there are some phenomenal 12x12 mount motors like the Brother Hobby 1504 uh, that will turn this thing into an absolute lunatic, beautiful, um, best flying micro you've ever built, uh, guaranteed. And I, I, like for real, like guaranteed. Um, that's how good it is. So yeah, I'm gonna, but well, and, and, and check this out. These are the GEP GEP. Oh, you guys know GEP RC. These are the GEP RC three inch uh, prop guards. 
and they're hilariously strong. I've shown these a couple times. The Gep RC used a, a very interesting plastic, and the way that they molded these, they put uh, supports all over the place, and they just did an incredible job. This prop guard is amazing. BQE sells it. Um, like, like it's, it's strong. Like, I think with two hands, I could collapse it, but... That's 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 full steam, right? Uh, Bill from BQE made the new arms that are nine by nine or twelve by twelve mount a little bit longer, and these fit, and that's pretty awesome. I've flown rigs with these on it; you can barely tell they're there. Um, this is a big deal. The only thing. And this makes me so annoyed. But these goddamn guards are drilled 9 by 9 That's the only thing that could make these guards better is if is if they were notched out to 12 by 12 and that you can't like you can't fake it. Like it's it's there's just not enough material, I don't think. Um, but there are some good 9 by 9 motors. Uh, these I'm going to take the um, the, the current rip squeak build that we just finished up, I'm going to switch the arms to these new slightly longer arms, and this will be able to run 3 inch full prop ducts. It can't now, or guards rather, it can't now because it's got the 9x9 only arms on it, but we built this rig with the 9x9 motors because at the time of the build, the 9x9 arms were the only option. Um, so it's perfect, I can just tear this apart, swap all four, four arms out, and I will have a 1306 motored, um, fully prop guarded 3 inch rig with a run cam hybrid on board and the ability to carry an Insta360 Go up top on the front or down bottom in the back. Um, and at that point, perfect micro? Perfect 3 inch? It's like 210, 220 grams all up, um, fully loaded. It's going to be about 250. Uh, the 1306 motors have plenty of sauce. Um, three to four minutes on a 4S450 battery. HD on board with a good FPV. Insta360 Go option. Prop guard option. What the fuck else do you want? Removable arms. Top mount. That's it. That, that, that's it, right? Like, what else could you possibly want or need from a... I mean, that, like, the, at that point... Who needs a 5-inch? Oh! Uh, Slideby uh, wants to see a pickpocket build... Um, probably won't see that. I'm not a big fan, um, I'm not a fan at all of, um, motors and or props in view. So the, and, and not to mention that my first two years of flying back in like 2017, 2018, uh, were spent flying toothpicks. Um, that, that is just what I like fell into. My first rig was a baby, it was the original Baby Hawk, which was a toothpick. Um, and then I moved it into a carbon fiber frame, put uh, uh, bigger props on it, and it ended up being a uh, three inch center camera, extremely lightweight quad. And then two and a half years later, <laughs> there were actual toothpicks. But um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of those rigs. Uh, what the hell was I just looking for? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, this this is kind of sort of prototype. Uh, this is the little homie from BQA. I don't know if this is actually available yet, um, but it's one of these new little um, 65 millimeter. This I am gonna build. Um, 65 mil. Um, yeah, it's 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 just a scaled down pickpocket. Um, this could be fun. I'm, I'm super interested in this. Um, 
and I don't know why. <laughs> but yeah, it's called The Little Homie, and uh, BQE is going to sell it at some point here. Uh, they might be already. I'm not totally sure. It, it wasn't on their website. Bill just threw this in for me. Um, I, I had asked them, like, like when it's going to be available so that I could tell you guys about it. And I don't remember what he said. But I just now remembered that we had that conversation. So I... I hope I hope he's cool with me having shown it. I guess I already showed it, so it's too late. Uh, Z says, uh, dude, you know about the Insta360 Go 2? The specs are pretty damn good. Um, I've heard of it. I, I've heard people talking about it. Uh, I haven't actually seen it or seen the specs. Um, if it's As long as it's the same form factor, I'm happy. I mean, it, it's it's going to be better no matter what. Uh, this one is actually almost dead. The, the screen is scratched. Uh, I'm going to fly this one really hard on this rip squeak and hopefully break it because I have the uh, I have the Asurion protection on it um, and I, I've been wanting to give you guys feedback on the Asurion uh, uh, yeah uh, protection from protection plan from Amazon moon goat six grams heavier oh wow that's a lot that's like a 20 that's like a that's almost a 30 percent increase in weight that's, that's not great 4k is interesting but i mean it's such a it's such a small lens that uh, fuck really six grams what the hell um license to drive says 60 frames per second um if i don't really care about 60 but 30 would be really nice i really wish um i really wish that they had just made the exact same thing, but made it 30 frames per second. Um, that That's all I really wanted out of it. Other than that, the Insta360 Go is perfect for me. At 1080, the footage looks fucking great, um, especially on a phone. Damn. So that's going to bring it up to 24 grams. Um, I know that doesn't sound like a lot to most of you guys, but I'm trying to get these, I'm, I'm trying to get these little tiny 65 millimeter tiny whoops to, to carry that Insta360 Go um, a little bit more confidently, and that weight increase is gonna really throw a wrench in that. Uh, because I am, I'm on on the 65. I'm kind of at the limit right now with the 18 grams. Um, like it'll 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 definitely carry the new one but it's gonna bring the performance level down to a, a place that I don't want it to be fuck um, man it will be nice though to get the extra to, to not have to deal with hold on a second that's the cat's food I gotta go give it to him bear back I know I know you guys believe that's the first time I've ever fed that cat? Jesus, it's crazy. What an asshole. <laughs> Love that little guy. Um, uh, Z says, naked go one. I have one on my desk. I've seen people do the, tear those things apart. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not going there. I need I need my cameras to be like durable as shit and pulling them all apart like that. Like I'm I'm worried to do a uh, a naked GoPro build. Uh, slide by says let's do a pickpocket build from BQE. We already talked about that. Z says oh we got that. Uh, Bricked FPV says is the moon go to brand new build or a rebuild? Brand new build. Uh, Alexander says those are nice micro frames. But can it make me a drink? It cannot, unless you maybe use one of the arms to stir your drink. But don't do that. You'll get carbon fiber. Uh, pooping face indeed. Brian Ladmaraz says, looks like the whip squeak might break at the motor mounts being drilled out so much. Um, yeah, maybe. Bill did make the, uh, he did make the new motor pads bigger. Um, so... He was already thinking about that. I know it's hard for you guys to see, but uh, wait, what if I show you like that? Yeah, yeah, there I can show you. 
So yeah, there's the old, the new versus the old. So the motor pad is definitely bigger. So he he added, yeah, he added material to try to avoid that. Um, but the only way to know for sure is to crash the shit out of him, uh, which I'm gonna do. Uh, all right, cool, caught up, good to go. Um, yeah, I know Alexander. <laughs> Five inch Fridays back. Here we go. Ready? Uh, all right. Yeah, I had to share that with you guys because uh, it's it excites me in the crotchal region. <laughs> Look at all this hardware I have strewn about the desk from the uh, from the Cinesplore build. What the hell's going on here? Man, I got all these batteries out. I was all ready to fly today, and then I woke up and I just heard rain when I woke up. I was like, no, <laughs> and it just refused to stop. Tempted to fly the goddamn Cinesplore in here, but it just, it's just a hot mess inside. This is just too small of an apartment for it. If, like, everything could blow, everything blows around and shit, it's crazy, dude. It's like a hurricane in here when, when I fly the, uh, anything bigger than a tiny whoop. Guess that's what you get for 900 square feet, though. Okay, one more mooter. And we can begin. Hey, Toxic FPV says, Towards your health with a $5 super chat. Thank you, brother. Uh, Semiar Rivera, matching Toxic's five. He says, Five Inch Friday is what me and my significant other call our weekly date night. Samuel, you know, whatever works, man. Um, Kristen and I have been together for the better part of like 15 years. Um, and some of the, some of our fondest memories are sitting around, like, playing board games together, or just, like, watching 18 episodes in a row of The Office, or, um, there's no rules, man. And that was before a fucking global pandemic hit. So, um, yeah, man. You guys are killing it. I'm here to tell you that you guys are doing it right. It's, uh, or actually, you know what? Some of our, some of our true fondest memories are, uh, watching another live streamer, uh, Riker, uh, who was a, uh, Diablo 3, well, a Diablo live streamer, like, that's what everybody knows him for, and, um, and yeah, and then us playing Diablo, uh, Kristen and I, uh, played Diablo 3 couch co-op mode, uh, for years, <laughs> like, like that was what we did together, um, for years and years and years, probably like, probably the, about three or so years, uh, we would just play that game a lot, and it was incredibly fun, you know, I mean, like, we didn't go out, we didn't go to clubs, we didn't go out to eat, we didn't go party, we were very broke at the time, and, um, I should say mainly because we were very broke at the time. Uh, but we had just as much, if not more, fun. It's, um... It's one of the... I, I, I try my best to, to, like, praise social media because everybody... Because nobody really does that. Everybody just shits all over social media. And, and I think it's important to remember that social media has a lot of really incredible aspects to it. Um that I think we sort of take for granted, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's allowed us to... It, it's, it's really allowed things to sort of change. And, and for... Um, uh, you guys say some words now. I'm sick of fucking talking. Um... It, it's allowed these, like, you know, niche hobbies and these, these niche things to become really enjoyable, but there's, of course, still this contingency of people that will call you a loser if you don't go out to a club on Friday nights and dance with strangers and get herpes. So, you know, fuck those people. You know what else the uh, the laptop's going to be able to do? It's going to be able to use this awesome little...
keypad thingy that uh, TweetFPV sent me. Everybody, if you're not subscribed to TweetFPV, go now or I'll beat you with a hammer. Uh, you get to pick. Beaten with a hammer or friends with TweetFPV. Uh, he's an awesome guy. Dan is a, is, is a super cool dude. And he's doing some really amazing stuff. And uh, you're missing out if you're not over there. So do yourself a favor and go over to TweetFPV's channel and subscribe. If you aren't already, you should already be. Uh, Tweet does... He makes uh, the uh, the skateboard grip tape uh, transmitter grips, and they're amazing. So if you don't have grip tape on your transmitter, you should. I was so... Not against, but like... I just didn't understand the grip tape thing on the transmitters. I just kind of thought it was silly, um, and then Dan sent me a set, and I put them on, and I went, oh, look, just another thing that I judge by, just another book that I judged by its cover, like a complete asshole. <laughs> why is this, why do my hands look so, uh, look, uh, like, extra pasty? The, uh, I might have to bail on this, uh, purple mat. Hey, perfect, Ruby Tim, thank you for that. Uh, Ruby Tim says, is your Christmas tree still up? Of course it is. Uh, your drill to make some holes in that their board was previously inaccessible to hold down hardware while soldering. You know, I did just, um, hold on. I might actually be able to get into that closet. Ah! 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 This is what I couldn't get to. Can you guys hear when I'm uh, when I'm screaming? Um, Huggy says keep the purple mat. Yeah, the 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 purple mat is uh, is confusing the camera. The the camera is struggling to uh, to white balance properly. I was hoping that by putting this white sticker here, that between this and between this, it would be able to properly white balance. But it's just not. It's it's just. It's doing a really bad job of, of white balancing. Um, that's a little bit better. I just made the, the light on the lamp a little bit warmer. Okay, so I need uh, M3-ish. Let's see what M3-ish is in standard. It's not 9 sixteenths. Is it 1 eighth? I think think it might be. Nah, that's still a little bit tight. That's what she said. Uh, let's go down to 764ths. Oh yeah, well, it's kind of in between. Uh, so I'll drill it small, and then we will scale up from there. Uh, ooh, they got a little punch action in here. That's nice of them. Uh, it's not gonna fit though. Um, look away. I'm, I'm I'm gonna do this in a very. Don't don't. Do as I say, not as I do. Don't don't do this. This is a. This is not what you should do. Thanks for the reminder, Daniel. Remember, don't do this. Nobody do this. This is this is not how it's done. God damn it! Um, I'm gonna get even more sketchier with this. Wait till you guys see this madness that's about to happen. Ow! <laughs> I think you guys might know what's coming. It's gonna be real dumb, but we're gonna go for it. I'm doing this 
for the street. This is for you guys. This this bit of stupidity is uh, sponsored by you guys. Come on, you shitbird, get in there. I refuse to do it by hand. Oh my god, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Easy stuff. Easy. Chomper FPV with a 1999 super chat. He says, bro, dude, my man, you're the best. Never give up. Oh, God, I dropped it in the fucking garbage can. Come on. In honor of Chomper, I'm going for it. Sue me all you want, you bastards. It's worth it. It's worth it. Dude, Chomper, thank you so much, brother. Super, super, super generous of you. Look at that. Uh, I'm just going to do one more. There's really no reason to do all four. I'm just going to do the other corner. And uh, all will be right with the world. Alright. That's how I wanted to do the first one. But then after it started going, I was like, well, it's, it's kind of fine. Alright. Yeah, let's go a little deeper. <laughs> Let me punch this one through a little bit farther, too. Oh, yeah! That's the stuff. And then I can just draw... drill. Not draw. I can just drill one more for the 2020. And we'll reuse the uh, the top corner. Oh God, no! Now nah, we're good. <laughs> Although that'd be one way to switch the purple mat out, drill a hole through it. Uh, I need something that's 2020, and I've got it. I'm just gonna use this little thing. And holy shit, that's not. Is that really 20 by 20? Wow, that is. I never realized it's so much smaller. And right. Okay. Hell yeah! Dude, thanks for the reminder. Oh god, that's a hot drill bit. They usually don't get that hot when I don't uh, crank on them that bad. I guess I was pushing harder than I thought. Uh, SST, I'm uh, drilling holes in my desk. <laughs> SST, you're about to see what I'm doing. Just, uh, just... Just stick with me for one second. You're gonna love my nuts. I mean, you're gonna love what I'm doing, rather. Um, look at this. Look at this fancy shit your boy's up to. Ow! Ah, better. Uh, okay. Get this little fella back in here. Ah! Okay. No. Off the desk with it. Uh, put things away. Put things away. Putting things away. Doing, doing the right thing, putting things away, not just leaving everything out. Putting things away, not leaving things out, putting things away. Hey, there we go. Oh my god. Okay, this is terrific. Uh, look what I did. I drilled some holes that are spaced 30 by 30 and 20 by 20, so that I could just throw a quick screw in to components. And voila, they'll be held down a little bit better on the uh, on the little wood block, so that they don't move around. Just a little, 
just a little thing I've been meaning to do for a while. Nothing, nothing groundbreaking, but um, it, little things like that are, yeah, they can they can actually make a big difference. So now the uh, the flux has all evaporated off. So let's hit it one more time and make sure it's nice and sticky icky, as the kids say. And let's get to tinnin. And away we go. Uh, soldering iron is at 670 degrees. I like to run it a little bit lower to give myself some extra time on the pads, just as a safety measure. No wrong answers. Uh, if you're going to crank the temperature up, though, be really careful. Uh, if you spend a little bit too much time on a pad, you can very easily uh, cook the adhesive underneath the pad that connects it to the PCB and lift that pad, which will destroy whatever that component is. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to not destroy your stuff. And I'm going to stream every goddamn day just to make sure that happens. That's the real reason for, for the daily streams at this point. All right. Big pads. Ho! <laughs> just waiting for the heat to transfer. There it goes. Now it's starting to spread. Let's give it a little bit of help. On to the next. Spread it around a little bit. This is the ground pad, so it's being a little more stubborn, but no big deal. And you can see, at 670 degrees, which a lot of people consider to be really low, I mean, it charged right through that ground pad. Yes, the entire ESC is a little bit warm right now because I've been soldering on pads, um, but yeah, I mean, like, the, my end goal is to put as little heat into this thing as possible. Uh, and, yeah, this is how I've been able to, uh, this is one way to do that. The other way being run at a high temperature and just be really fast on each pad. Um, I prefer this way because it's not, it's, it's... I find this way to be a little bit safer, and it's not much of a, of a time penalty. You know what I mean? What, how long did that take? Two minutes? Once I actually started soldering, right? Like, once we started doing the thing that... Um, oh, God. Yikes. Held on a little bit too good. Good problem to have. Uh, Alexander says, if you spin the drill bit in reverse, you can prevent uh, the part from climbing up the bit. Uh, when I when I pull it out of the hole, I stubbornly don't do that. I stubbornly just yank it out of the hole like a like a fucking gorilla. Uh, so uh, our new building method is to go center out, but I already have the arms on, and I, I kind of want to keep the arms on because I I want to have this these like obstructions. You know what I can do? I can remove these standoffs because they're very much in the way. Um, so let's get these standoffs out of here and then we'll have the platform that we're going to build on ready to go. And I think that the arms will stay in. Uh, it says apparently it's 10 millimeters smaller. Jesus, did I lock tight these? Why was that so tight? Oh, right. I wanted to... I was flexing the frame... Uh, to see how strong it was, so I must have cranked these down. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to flying this, even though, uh, the, you're, you guys are gonna see a definite shift from 5-inch to, to micro stuff here, uh, in terms of flight footage, which I know pretty much all of you, I, I know that's gonna be pretty much news to many of your ears. Um, many people have been asking me for that for a long time. Um, to be totally honest, 
recent like we just we haven't really had uh, the run cam hybrid was the was the first HD cam that was like acceptable enough quality um, for me to, to to spend like 10 15 20 hours on a, on a flight edit for it uh, four inch movement was the was the first was the first of those and I, I still can't believe how decent it came out. And that that edit was sort of like um, a little bit of an eye opener for me. Of like, hey, we're finally here. Like, um, yeah, we finally have motors and HD cams that can produce um, decent enough footage for my impossible standards. Really, is the is the situation. Um, Drone Pilot says, being an electrical engineer, I will kind of agree with you uh, on the soldering, but what I use is a monster-sized iron <laughs> just for ESC's uh, low temp, but mass doesn't allow the heat sink on the ESC to remove it, uh, so it's a split second. Nice, Drone Pilot. What, uh, what, uh, is it, do you just have, like, an expensive soldering rig that, that does that? Although, I, I, Everybody keeps. I mean, it, it certainly seems from what everyone says that the TS one hundred on a six S battery cranks like unbelievably hard. I, I don't have a TS one hundred um, uh, mainly because I don't really like the ergonomics of it. Um, the the wire attached to it that's then attached to the battery is a little bit like just too heavy for me. I I, I really prefer. The, um, I have a Weller 1010 here, and it's it's just perfect. I, I just absolutely love it. Um, it's the right price. It's the right size. The the it's yeah, it fits really well on the side of the desk here. Um, and uh, yeah, no complaints. No complaints. Oh, these arms are gonna fall out. Well. I forgot how these arms are held in. Uh, I'll just be gentle. Maybe they won't. They're held in on notches, like the the in the inside of the arms are like are like that, and then they just er, and there's a screw, that goes, so there's it's actually like really small, um, and they just go like that. So right now I can just well here look, that's what they look like. Um, but I want to keep them in here because I want to make sure that I don't uh, mount this thing in a way... God damn it. I want to make sure I don't mount this thing in a way that... Okay, well... Fuck you! Arms are out. Um, I just need to remember which is the front versus the back of the frame. Okay, so this is the front, this is the back, and I want to do the battery lead real quick. Let's just knock that out. Why did I take this off of the board? What a goddamn donkey. All right, here we go. Uh, slide by says, how long are you streaming for? Got to run and go get some food. Uh, probably a while. Drone Pilot says, TS-100 is damn good, but I have many irons, small, medium, large, one for surface mount. Um, attachments, Jesus, that must be real little. Uh, heat gun that melts solder. <laughs> Woo-hoo-hoo, $1,000 of solder equipment. It would make sense, though, if you're using it. Why the hell wouldn't you? Um, even a... Pro, a pros kit desoldering station best investment ever no shit what is it does it use something some fancy some fancy fanciness oh man this is kind of annoying to have this screw here at the moment well one's better than none one's probably fine to be honest uh okay 
What? Oh, 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 oh. I know what I want to do. I know what I want to do. I've got the fanciest of fancy battery leads over here that I was going to use for this Fetech build, but I don't even know if I'm going to do this Fetech build anymore. Um, I might just end up selling this stuff. I just, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's, uh, there's, um, look at that. That's uh, Pyrodrone's Clear XT30 and it's Pyrodrone's LED thingy. <laughs> and this is like a super fancy build, so uh, yeah, fuck it. Let's go super fancy top to bottom. Um, so, this is going to be mounted roughly there. This fella is going to be somewhere around there. So... The battery leads are going to be, all right, so that's going to be like that. So I want the battery lead to come up to roughly there. So with it there, we're going to go down there and then, hmm, is there a standoff that I can, uh, I'm going to do that again. Is there a standoff that I can strain relief this to? It's all the way back here. So if I ran it out and back, yeah, I think that's what I, I think I can then zip it to that little fella. Yeah, that's, no. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know what I want to do about that. If I hold it on there, or if I zip it to there, I should say, it's going to have to make that corner, and then it can kind of like angle upwards, and then the, my battery lead can come there. Uh, yeah, what the hell, let's do that. Give that a shot. So it's going to be roughly there, the wires are going to come out and back, and that might be just right. So, oh god. So there is positive. I do want to, I'm going to solder these at a 45 uh, to get them going backwards the way that I want them. And let me look at the, uh, let me look at my batteries real quick. Uh, all right, here's an R line. So when the R-line sits on the top plate, this is flat side up. Okay, cool. So we're going to go flat side up somewhere around that. Well, I don't have to worry about that. I just want to go flat side up, and then it's going to be positive like that. It's going to go roughly at that much of an angle. I want it to sit that much on the pad. It is going to stretch. It is going to need to go up though okay no so that's good and all right just leave a little mark in there and then chop it and yep that looks about right by cutting them like that by cutting them to length like that and having them be irregularly sized it it just it gives the wire like it just makes the wire do what you want it to do right if you you can you can just cut them straight and just run them out the back and then just bend the damn thing but in tight builds and just in general i would rather um have them yeah pointing the direction that that i, I sort of want them to go that's what works for me but if it doesn't work for you that's okay that's okay what's up maniac KH uh, says, do you think digital toothpicks and whoops are at the level of flight performance that you could recommend um, to go DJI digital only? Absolutely not, K. Um, absolutely not. That is one of the biggest reasons why I haven't gone, um, I haven't gone DJI yet. Uh, Drone Pilot says the, the Proskit desoldering station is like a gun. It has different heads for different pads. No shit. 
but it will expose the holes back into a whoop board uh, to pass your wires through the hole again. That's super awesome. I um, Every once in a while, I will really struggle to, to clear the holes out with, uh, with solder braid, um, but I can usually get it after, after a couple attempts. Um, yeah, this solder, this Chemtronic solder wick is, is really, really good. I actually, I gotta get some more of it. I think this is my last roll here. Um, well, it's my dad's last roll. <laughs> but I think I stole it from him long enough that, long enough ago that, uh, it's, it's maybe legally mine by now, perhaps? Probably not. Uh, Kay, yeah, it's, um, really, 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 really good question. Um, and yeah, the the um, the Caddx VTXs are just too heavy. They're just too heavy for. They just have such a negative impact on on flight performance. The flip side is, if if you're building a toothpick or a whoop specifically to get HD footage, um, it's it's not. Uh, if if the DJI in goggle DVR footage is good enough for you, then it's a little bit more realistic. Um, but you're you're locked into it at that point, right? Like like right now, if I want HD on a Whoop, I put the Insta 360 Go on it. If I want the the Whoop to perform a lot better, I take that off of it. Once you've gone to DJI, you you don't, you're in, right? Like your your whoop is gonna perform like ass, regardless, uh, in my opinion, because of the extra weight that that's gonna add to it. Um, so, yeah, for right now, I'm still on analog, so that I can go back and forth, so I can fly freestyle, uh, non HD, and have a whoop that absolutely rips. Like the I'm telling you guys, the 0802, the the fucking Mobula Six, man. The Mobula 6 with the 25,000 kV race motors is the best the best $80 you will ever spend. It is the performance is just nuts. Like it's just so much fun to have that much power inside the house. It um it just really opens up like inverted stuff and like Matty flip stuff and and like stalls and momentum moves and it, it's just a whole different tiny whoop experience. I um. I can't wait somebody to to see somebody that like discovers the hobby. Uh, and just gets a Mobula Six and just like, hammers with the Mobula Six, kind of like what, uh, SR thirteen did the the first like couple years of, of him being in the hobby he only flew tiny whoops and the dude is a ninja it's really like ugh, I love watching Sebastian fly it's so unique it's so styly it's really really cool and um, and yeah with the with those motors now you can like legit uh, just fly tiny whoop and then transition to uh, to everything else without any real problem come on you little jerk oh, let me do this on the big wires it does help to hit them with the uh, to hit them with the flux pen the, the 30 gauge wires I don't really find that it helps but on the big wires to get the uh, just to get the heat transferred, give them a little bit of flux pen love, and uh, and it'll make you happy. Dustin says your red and purple 550 cord showed up today. Finally, nice, Dustin. You had to order it, dude. I I thought I thought you said you just had it. I didn't want you to have to order anything, man. I'm sorry. I thought you said you already had it in. Um, hopefully, you you wanted to get it anyway. Uh, if not, j just t do me a favor and just tell me that you wanted to get it anyway, because then I'll feel... <laughs> make you feel good. <laughs> Lie to me to make me feel better, guys, please. <laughs> I'm totally fine with it. Hey, there we go. There's the big fella. Mountain, getting some solder all up in them strands.
Ugh, I was trying to not let it drip on the uh, on the mat, but it did. That's okay. There we go. Much better. Uh, now that I got some flux on this, it's going to be much better as well, betcha. Yeah, there we go. Now we're cooking with acetylene. Look at that little soda ball. Okay, here we go with the battery lead. Uh, we want flat side up, so I'm going to hold it like this. And let's get it in some tweezers. Let's see what we can do. Uh, you guys are not going to be able to see this all that well. But um, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. You guys all know how to solder by now. I, 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 I trust you. Okay, here we go. Negative lead going on first. Melting wire. Just add a little bit more just to get the heat transfer going a little quicker. This is where I actually want to turn the temperature up, but I can't reach it with my left hand. So I'm just gonna go with it. It is it is melting now. God damn it. I guess I can reach over there. Uh, let me come off and then I'm gonna give it a second. It did melt down the bottom, um, but there's not enough solder on the, uh, there's just not enough solder there. I ran out at like the perfectly wrong time, so let's fix that. Ah, okay, cool. Thanks, Dustin. Thanks for making me feel better. <laughs> I don't care if it's true or not. <laughs> I'm making it true in my mind. Um, uh, Drone Pilot says, to be honest, a medium-sized 80-watt soldering iron will do all the jobs needed for quads and coupled with solder braid everything you need that that's what i had guys for my first like three years before getting this weller i had a, a straight up like 50 60 dollar i don't know the actual wattage but it, it wasn't a lot um and it was fine it, it actually um not having a ton of power forces you to actually learn how to solder like just getting a soldering iron that that has a million horsepowers um you can kind of half-ass a lot of your soldering and that can bite you. That that can like legitimately bite you in the ass down the road. Um, so yeah, it's uh, in my opinion, uh, maybe just because it was my path, but whatever. Uh, learning on a on a shittier iron, it just you know, learning on shitty gear, you have to work a little bit harder, and you have to really like learn technique. Um, whereas folks in a, that can afford to just throw money at stuff. A lot of times can uh, can sort of skip that, but yeah, skipping it you'll you'll never get quite as good. There we go. That's much better at 720. Oh wow, it's just munching right through that. Look at that. Look at us go. And I still don't have enough solder on here. Ah, there we go. There we go. I just watched it get all up in there. I had it where I wanted it, and then it just moved a little bit too much. Oh, I think it just hit the perfect spot right at the last second there. I can't really see it, but I'm just waiting, waiting, waiting. Oh, yes! The, uh, the insulation, just like right at the last second, slid perfectly off the side of the... Uh, the pad, just how I was hoping. Who does number two work for? Here we go. I'm going to preemptively pull out a nice little straight bit of solder. 
and put a bunch of it on the tip. Here we go! Huzzah! Ha huang! Shasha! Sasa! What the fuck is that? Alright, uh, it just uh, melted down on the pad itself. Give it another second. Push this down. Get the wire exactly where I want it. And... Oh, that's a pretty solder joint. Oh, look how gorgeous you are, you little bastard. Oh, I could fucking cry at how good looking that is. Not really, but, you know. And then I'm going to screw it all up by putting a, uh, a set of, a set of leads for the, um, for the capacitor on it at some point. Maybe I'll do the capacitor now. Eh. We got hot as shit. Uh, this is one of the AK-32s that I have prepped. Uh, I will be prepping all of the ones that go in the um, in the, the bind and fly rigs that I'm gonna buy. And by prepping it, I just mean I run a bead of epoxy around this this separate center board here uh which just makes it invincible <laughs> like that is the only thing that has ever failed on one of these um and i've i've even fixed the ones that have exploded and they've been fine uh frank i did have uh, i had one screw up on the corner I, t I took the screw out of the other corner because it was kind of in the way uh, Dustin says, yes, I need to get some more anyway. Oh, we got that. Uh, Toxic FV says, are the flight controller gummies, oh god, on, on a Mobula 7, the same as an M3 gummy? I need to get some replacements and want to make sure I order the right thing. Uh, Toxic, the, the Tiny Whoop gummies are basically just M3 on the outside and M2 on the inside. That's the easiest way to remember uh, those gummies. Uh, whereas this uh, this ESC, for example, these gummies are these are the more standard gummies. These are M4 sized on the outside and M3 on the center. Does that answer your question? Uh, Dustin says, "Don't set the small stuff," uh, but it is true. He says, "Okay, good." <laughs> FV Hawk says, uh, the XD60 is the baddest thing to solder on a quad. Yeah, it's, um, it's not great, but, uh, it's really good practice. The, the, putting the XD60s on, the reason why it's so hard is because we don't do it anywhere else on the rigs. Um, I don't have much trouble with it because I've built a shitload of 5-inch rigs, but I know exactly what you're saying, FV Hawk, um, especially, like, coming from micros for two years and then, um, having to start soldering different shit like this yeah it was uh, at first i was like what the fuck where's all the heat going <laughs> um and eventually i found out where all the heat was going and you will too it's uh it's it's just one of the many sort of repetition items in fpv so one of the things i was trying to make sure i didn't do is put anything that would interfere oh i got away with it okay cool Got away with it. All right. I am just going to bend this upwards just a tiny little bit. And I'm going to try to do it by not cranking on the pad. I'm going to try to just bend the wire just to give it a little tiny bit of upward momentum. Earlier today, I watched a, um, I totally missed it, uh, when it, it was like four months ago, I guess it would be, uh, but, uh, Zorro did it, has a, an edited video with a, um, him and, uh, Finky did a little interview, Skype call, hangout session, and it was really good. I watched it earlier, and I was, or no, I'm sorry, I watched it last night, actually, before I went to sleep, and, uh, and it was great. Finky curses a lot. I, uh, I, I, I've always liked Finky, but he was never necessarily on my radar. Um, 
and uh, I like him a lot more now that he that I know that he curses a lot. Um, if that makes me a bad person, then uh, I'm a bad person. <laughs> I don't know. I just I, I like people that curse. Uh, it, it's a it's a it's a it it's it makes people feel a little bit more like genuine, sort of in 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 a way in my eyes. Um, I don't have kids though. People with with kids that are trying not to have their kids be the foul mouths in class. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's one of the many reasons that um, at the moment, up until the moment, uh, I, I just I don't really have any interest in. Uh, in creating more people for for the earth um, or raising uh, if, if Kristen and I do decide at some point that we would like our life to involve raising another human being uh, we will adopt uh, and Kristen's adopted so that'll be a really nice uh, way to sort of complete the circle um, yeah Adopting a child is also one of the, like, if, if you, if for your whole life you, like, specifically try to be as destructive to this planet as possible, right? And, like, you don't recycle, you don't do any of the things that could, that could help the Earth. Um, simply, which is not me, I, I'm, I'm the opposite of that, but I'm just using it as an example. Um, if you were to do that, but then you adopted instead of... Uh, creating a child, you would uh, be more carbon neutral, more environmentally friendly, whatever, uh, than like everybody or whatever. It's it's the one thing that you can do in your life that is more green than anything else, uh, is what I'm trying to say. Unfortunately, it, it and, and so yeah, that that's one of the the many reasons that we would look into adoption. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Wow, there are a lot of pads on this. So this is an Acon F7 30 by 30, and my God, I haven't put a 30 by 30 flight controller in in a while. Um, there's an absurd amount of room on here. It's, I'm, I'm really impressed with uh, with how much room there is. What is this? This says pit slash on. I think that's in the right spot. So what I'm starting to think about is how I'm gonna mount this. Uh, I'm, I'm probably just gonna... Oh my god. Akon, come on man. Why do you gotta put the fucking video out right next to the video in? Damn it. Uh, so, would I rather run the video up over? I think what I'm going to do is run the video maybe up over the board here. Uh, because if I run the video lines up over, basically like this, on this path that the tweezers are, I can keep it away from these little fellas and it'll still have like a nice short shot. Uh, there is VBAT in here, but it's on the little 30 gauges and it's not doing a, a, a ton of a ton of work. Um, Drin Pilot says it's expensive, uh, like, uh, like, sa like saying big ass car, it adds more to the big and saying, uh, and saying big fucking car adds more. My kids now adults, uh, are very expressive in comments. Yeah. No shit, Squitchy. Good on you, man. Good fucking shit. Squitchy says, hell yeah, I have two adopted sons. Nice. Um, yeah, man, that's, that's fucking great. Like, and I, and I don't care why. Like, the, when, it's, it's so horrifying to me that, like, it feels like the norm when you tell someone that, that, you've adopted children it feels like the norm is for them to say why like i'm gonna stab you like i can't imagine if someone said that to me that that that's like the most insulting thing in the fucking world like what no what is wrong with you why Get the fuck out of here the why 
Don't say why. Say, dude, thank you. That's that's absolutely incredible. You're you've done something super selfless by doing that. Um, uh, yeah. People are people can be shits, man. Makes me sad. Makes me sad sometimes, but uh, I don't know. So I've got acres of clearance under this ESC, and I don't have much clearance above it. So I'm going to go to a shorter standoff here, um, because ideally I don't want to... Um, I would love to not go any higher on this hardware, because I, I feel like I might have measured it out. Mm, maybe... Let's see. Let me do a quick test here. Uh, that's the wrong camera. Um, so this guy is here. This guy is here. And how much space do I actually have? There's a chance I didn't measure this. Oh shit, now I have tons of space. Okay. Oh god, yeah. I have all the space in the world. Um, I am going to go to longer hardware. Uh, because... The, uh, the, the lower I go with the ESC, the, the more these battery wires are going to ram into this piece of carbon. It's, it's just... It's a function of the way that this frame is designed. Um, this frame is designed in a way to, to minimize weight and maximize strength. And, um, but that came, that comes with a specific, uh, set of, like, yeah, it, it, you can't, nothing's free. Nothing's free. Nothing good is free. And this is fine. You could easily get around this by just um, zapping these things at a 90 degree angle, or there's any number of ways you could uh, not have to deal with this, but uh, it's fine. It's going to be fine. It's fine. It's going to be alright. Uh, these are longer. What was that? That's a lot longer, though, isn't it? Whoa, okay, yeah, that's too long. Uh, what about this? What about this little fella? Uh, that one's shorter. I have a feeling that I've got 20s in here, and I don't want to go all the way up to 25s. Yep, that's probably a 20. Sure enough, that's a 20, and that maybe this is a 30. Oh, this is a 30. So... Do I have any 25s? I think I do. I think that's what I just found. Hey! Look at that. Alright, so that's... That, that makes me sad. Uh, because these are titanium 20s, and I wanted to use titanium on the stack mount because the stack mount doesn't take a lot of abuse. Um, yeah, Squishy says uh, there's so many kids who need parents. That, that, that's, I mean, that, that right there is the reason to, to adopt. Like, all, all the other shit that I said, that, that's all nonsense. Um, yeah, 100%. The reason to adopt children is because there are a ton of them that need good parents. Um, and, I don't know, I feel like uh, if, if you guys are willing to stick around and listen to me bang on about uh, politics and, and just my idea of what's right and wrong and, and shit like that, um, I don't know. I feel like that'll sort of that sort of inherently means that you're gonna be a good parent, um, because yeah, it's if if you're not a good person, you typically don't hang around with good people, <laughs> or or like you know what I mean, like like seek out and watch other good people. You you surround yourself with with fellow bad people. That's just sort of how it works. <laughs> that 
took a weird turn. Okay, we got our hardware. It's not titanium, but that's all right. Here we go. <laughs> Dustin says to drug pilot, revenge is a dish best served cold. I can only imagine what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm gonna get in trouble one day for talking shit, man. And I don't give a fuck. Because I might talk shit, but at least I'm fair. 16, 18, 20. Uh, not fair. Fair is not the right word. Uh, at least I am... I don't know. On, I'm I'm on the side that believes in fairness to everyone and kindness and not a bunch of fucking crybabies that when they don't get their way they try to burn the whole system down. You know what I'm saying? That's what children do. And, you know, I, I try to be a little bit more mature than that just a little just a little if i get too mature then i become boring so you know it, it, it's a dance it's a dance compassionate hey that's a really good word son of flat top that's a good word for it yeah i i, I give a fuck about other people um and uh i don't know i i've been i've been pretty horrified uh, for a while now, that um, when when I look at like the general public, I I, I feel like I'm the only one that <laughs> that gives a fuck about anyone else, and um, that that's a that that's not a great world to live in, man. I, I, I've I've lost a, a lot of faith in humanity, unfortunately. Um, but I'm trying to. Trying to stay optimistic, guys. It's, you know, I mean, it's it's never been more challenging. But uh, all the super hard things that I've done in my life have, you know, it, they they've been really good things. Um, even in failure, even even the really hard things that I've done that that I've completely failed at, um, they were moments of of change in my life. And, uh, even if change feels bad in the moment, uh, eventually you're going to be able to look back at it and be like, all right, well, I learned this, 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 and this from that really shitty experience. And what the fuck is playing on Epidemic Sounds right now? Um, and yeah, some lessons you just have to learn that way. It's, uh. It's a part of the the journey of life, and um, it's uh, I don't know. It's easy to take that shit for granted, you know. Uh, just above that was my comment about being snipped. Oh, nice drone. Uh, my best friend in the world, Brad, followed that same path, um, but him and his wife don't have any kids, and they don't have any interest either. Um. Yeah, for the record, guys, um, in, in case nobody has ever told you this, um, because I've I, I, that, that I've, I've heard that from people before, um, you don't have to have kids. Like, you can do whatever you want. In, in America, there's this attitude that if you don't have kids, there's something wrong with you, and, and like, you, sh you should be shunned, and, like, the, the, the reactions that Kristen and I get from people that when we tell them that we're, we're, we don't have and don't have any plans to have children, it, it's really sad, man. It's, it's really, really sad. People take this approach of, like, they hide behind this, like, oh, well, I want to help you. I, I, I want to I, I wanna make sure that you don't make a huge mistake. And it's like, okay, so you think that, so you think that we didn't... So you think that we're that dumb? 
right? Like, like you think that we haven't had that conversation 7,000 times, right? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm learning, I, I feel like in the last, well, th this, this live stream has taught me a lot about, um, <laughs> warranted versus unwarranted advice, or, or just like, like, a lot of times, if people don't ask for advice, they don't want advice. You guys know what I mean? Like, like there are times where it, it's appropriate, but there are times where it's definitely not appropriate. Um, and, yeah, and, and I, um, sometimes I'll get advice from people that is, that I don't want, and it has changed my approach to that for the better so that when when i when i leave comments on people's videos i leave them in a much more respective way um and in a much more constructive way too um yeah i don't know you don't you don't have to help everyone like if someone asks you for help help them if someone doesn't ask you for help maybe don't help them um a part of life is, you know, everybody has their own path. Like, everybody is on, and, and a part of life is getting to live that path and, and make mistakes and, 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 you know what I mean? Like, learn on your own, uh, learn things in your own time and at your own pace. And that's, that's totally fine. Let me zap a couple of, uh, of 30 gauge wires on this little, uh, LED 20 by 20 that I've crudely <laughs> that I've crudely VHB taped to the bottom because it's lighter than than using the uh, the hardware. <laughs> I don't know if this thing is gonna stay. It, it's purple though, so I, I really it, and it's it's gonna stay. It's gonna look cool. Um, Squishy FP says uh, now I know this is the best FPV channel. <laughs> Family Guyver says, I've been a single dad for two kids for six years now. Days can be rough, but well worth the rewards. Family Guyver, that's gnarly, man. You're a fucking hero, dude. That's, that's, yeah, man, that's, I can't imagine. I, I, that's the other thing, too, man. Like, people take having kids so lightly, like, it's a fucking lot, yo. <laughs> like, oh my god, it is a lot. And, and it's, and it's for a lot of years. And, like, it's not, you, you gotta... Just the, this this attitude of, like, having kids just being, like, the default. Like, oh, my God, it kills me. Because, like, there's so many parents that are awful. <laughs> and, like, and, like, should not have had children. Like, you guys know who I mean. They're really shitty people that have no business creating and just ruining another one or two or three people. Um, I really wish that it was just more of a decision and less of a given um is it like that in the rest of the world like is that th th that strikes me as a as a relatively american like uh, um and also a, a um a sort of a privileged thing right like I, I my assumption is that the rest of the world has lower rates of having children because they just can't afford like they're just not as as rich as as we are in in the u.s um, and kids are expensive. I mean, of course, you'll find a way. Uh, but, yeah, when, when Chris and I talk about it, it's, it's a thing that, that comes up. Like, like, we can't afford to, we can't afford to support uh, ourselves. We, we can't afford to support two people. Um, the last thing that we're going to do is add a third in, until we're a little bit more financially stable. Or, <laughs> I mean... Until we are financially stable. <laughs> Shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> the word more is... Uh, doesn't make any sense there for us, unfortunately. Because our finances are like a hand grenade with the pin pulled. <laughs> uh, Alright, here we go. A little bit of 30 gauge loving for our LED obsession. Nothing wrong with being obsessed with LEDs. 
Makes your shit look cool. And anything to look a little bit less nerdy. <laughs> Actually, anything to make these look like more of a toy. The, the, the... I want my rigs to be, I mean, within reason, like, I, I don't want to shoot up to, like, a, show up to, like, a paying gig with a bunch of pink, you know what I mean, like, a bunch of pink stuff going on, that seems kind of weird to me, but, um, yeah, anything, uh, anything I can do to make these things look less intimidating to Karen, did you guys see the, uh, the, the, the video of, uh, of the Karen that got maced while breaking into the Capitol building. She was very upset that she got maced while trying to invade the Capitol. I think that she should be put in Guantanamo forever for both doing that and also for being so goddamn dumb that she can't Draw the parallel. <laughs> you guys know what I... I'm not even going to say it. I, I don't have to finish it because everybody with, with more than one brain cell gets the insanity of, uh, of someone being upset that they weren't allowed to... Yeah. 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 These people are just, I mean, what is going on, guys? Like, is it just me? I mean, like, there's crazy, and then there's, then, and then there's that, <laughs> you know? Like, I, I, I'm just like, I don't know. Next level. Next level insanity. Really disappointing, man. Really scary, really disappointing, really heartbreaking. Um, just gross. Just... The worst that a human being can be. Alright, these are tiny little pads, so I've got, I only stripped a tiny little bit of silicone. Let's see how that goes. There's already a big ugly blob of solder on this, on this pad, which I should remove, but it's just an LED, so I don't, I don't really care for it to be perfect. That's fine. Um, if I offended anybody with the, the last couple minutes, uh, good. I would like for you to be offended. Um, because what happened is not okay. And, um, yeah. You should be very offended. Um... That doesn't make any sense. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. But, um, yeah, if anybody doesn't like what I just said, tough shit. That's what I was trying to say. You can go. I'll live. I don't need you. To be totally honest. It's, uh... Money uh, doesn't matter at all when it comes to human rights and, and when it comes to... Um, yeah, there, there are just things that, uh, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> there are just times and situations where, um, yeah, it's, it's bigger than, and it's, it's bigger than that. And, uh, this is one of those situations. So, um, yeah, if you want to stay, you're more than welcome to, but, uh, I won't miss you if you have to leave, believe me. I like to surround myself with good, kind, caring people. <clears throat> Sorry. RC Ritter FPV with 270 Medicare for All. Thank you, RC Ritter. 
very cool of you. And Obi Quad with a 4.99 super chat, he says, "I just wanted to see if that three dollars is accurate and goes up." Uh, Obi Quad, it, it's as accurate as 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 I am. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna go eight, and then I'm gonna do the math. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna round it up, and I'm just gonna say ten. And thank you, fellas. If you do a super chat and you call this out in any way, shape, or form, I will add your super chat to it. If you just do a super chat, my assumption is that that's just like you saying, "Hey, here you go." You know, the 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 gear funds are like if I mean it's not a gear fund at the moment, but um, yeah, if if you want to contribute specifically to this, you got to say it. Um, if you just want to send me a couple bucks for, for as, as a show of appreciation for what I'm doing, yeah, then uh, type into your super chat, I love you, you gangly bastard, um, please talk more shit, or some such. Um, yeah, I really, I, I try my best to not, uh, not go down the political rabbit hole on these streams um, but there are certain situations where I will not where I um, yeah I will and if that's too much for you then I understand um, I, I will challenge you though if, if that is you and if you are about to leave um, I will challenge you to open your eyes do a little bit of unbiased research that means uh, not Fox News um, and yeah there's uh, there's a world of reality out there that you're not currently in and that's a really big problem and uh, the rest of us need you to join us here in reality because you're gonna destroy every you're gonna be a potential part of everything being destroyed and that is gonna cause mass mass suffering um, and really just potentially be the end so how about we not do that um, how about we put our adult pants on and respect the fact that seven million more people voted for one person than the other and let's move the fuck on um, let's not be little children that are throwing temper tantrums that their dictator didn't win how about that um, the, the past couple of days I, I don't I'm just done man I'm fucking done I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit if my number of subscriptions cuts in half right now. Um, because the, the, the half of the people that are left are the people that I want to be watching this. Um, they're the people that I want to be enjoying this content. Um, not people who think it's okay to... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, moderators, please, uh, you can go ahead and strike with an iron fist as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm done. I, I don't care. Um, please make sure that, it, that there's not, like, please make sure before iron fisting anyone that you make sure that it's not, like, a communication thing, right? Make sure that they're not on the right side of this, but wording something incorrectly. Um, but yeah, man, I, I've, I've just fucking had it. I, I, I've, I'm, I'm so tired. I'm so frustrated. I'm so ashamed. I'm so confused. Um, it, it's just, it's just so sad, man. It's so fucking sad. So sad to see so many people get brainwashed into being such awful people. Because I know that they're not. I know that they're not this awful. But they've just been tricked. 
and but like I don't know <laughs> I don't know like I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and and I'm and I, I just no no too much Oh, I have spacers right here. <laughs> what a jackass. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. Nathan wants me to move on. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I'm trying. It scares me a little bit that, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, I've, you know, I've also been thinking lately about, um, so I was in, uh, I was in Joshua's stream the other day and, uh, and somebody, uh, after this I'll move on, I promise. Uh, but, but this is not totally, th this is a separate thing. Uh, it was, uh, it was his, uh, his stream with Blunty and, uh, somebody commented in the chat ragging on Blunty, um, ragging on the way that he looks. And, um, I've always been a really skinny guy and, and got the shit beat out of me when I was little because of it. And it was, you know, I was never like the popular kid and got a lot of shit for it. And, um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sensitive to that stuff. And, and I said, and I, and I replied back to the dude and I said, Hey, look, don't be a jerk off for no reason. How the fuck would you like if somebody said, you know, somebody insulted you and immediately um, I got jumped all over by people saying, don't feed the trolls, um, they'll, they'll just go away. And I really don't agree with that. I, I think that ignoring the trolls has a lot to do with where we are at now. Um, and like, I certainly don't think that we should... I'm, I'm not pro-violence, but I am pro-setting people straight, right? And I, I don't know. I feel like we need to do that a little bit more. I, I feel like when, when people are really shitty like that, um, they need to be made an example out of. So, and, and if we do that a bunch of times by just calling them out online, right? We're not punching them in the face. We're not putting their life in risk. We're calling them an asshole in front of other people online, right? Like, they're going to live. They're going to be all right. They're, they're, they're going to live through that. Um, and I, I really think that we need to do that more, not less. Um, and I think that once that becomes the norm and, and once there is, uh, there should be a fear, right? Like you should be afraid, in my opinion, to, to go onto someone else's live stream and openly insult one of the people that's giving you free content. You know what I mean? Like... I think there should, there needs to be like some sort of a fear there because otherwise these scumbags are just going to keep doing it. Um, I don't know, just a, just a random thought that, that I had the other day that really pissed me off that I've been sort of thinking about. Um, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's, it, it's just, everything is just such a fucking shit show. Yeah, Frank's on my side. He says, I agree. Ignoring the trolls makes them think that what they do is acceptable. That's exactly what it does. Like, yes, all the trolls are trying to do is get attention. But, and and so, yeah, okay, I'm giving them atten attention by responding to them, but I'm also tr ragging on them, right? Like, I don't know, man. I don't know what the fucking answer is. But I know that ignoring the motherfuckers ain't working. There aren't less trolls now than there were before, right? So, like, we've we tried to ignore them for a long time. 
I don't think that's working. Let's take a different tact. Let's shit all over them. <laughs> Let's just try something different. Let's fucking, you know, like... Is it just me? But, like, for me, when, when things aren't working, I try something different. I don't just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, with within reason. But, I don't know. Is it just me? Is it just me, guys? Tell me it's not just me. Or I'll think I'm crazy. Uh, I mean, that's okay, too. It's okay to be crazy. If you're hanging out in here, you're a little bit crazy. Listening to the ramblings of a madman. Uh, let me zoom you guys out a little bit. And then we're going to save. Uh, Huckleberry says I... S um, oh, yeah, Huckleberry saw me check him on the chat. Uh, he just nonstop made comments one after the other. Um, and then Don Led says, Trolls will be trolls. Uh, they all need to be outed and, and fucked out of their mom's basement. <laughs> All right, so is it is it not just me that's had this thought before? That makes me feel really good. I don't know. A lot of times, like, when I go into, against the norm inside of my own head, I'm just like, man, you're a fucking maniac, dude. Why can't you just comply with what everybody else does and says? Um, Slideby says, I think the reaction to the trolls that keep... Uh, I think it's the reaction to the trolls that keeps them going. If you ignore... If you, if you ignore it, they stop, kind of like a child. So, yeah, Slideby, for, for a long time... I, 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 you know, because that's, that's what everyone says, right? And I, I can totally see, um, I can totally see why we would think that's going to work. But they aren't little kids. They're adults. They're definitely immature adults, but they still aren't little kids, right? So I feel like they understand that. You know what I mean? Like, they, they understand that they're going to get ignored. Um, but then, because there's no negative consequence, why would they stop doing it? Right? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. You moderators know that, that you can come down on those fuckers and ban them, like, immediately. I, I, I would prefer it. Um, but, I don't know. That's just not... It's, it's not enough. SSTFPV says troll back harder. Yeah, see, that's where I'm at at this point. It's it's like just banning these people isn't enough. They just go troll somebody else. They just go ruin someone else's fucking day. Um, I want to... I think that we need to out them and just put them and just completely embarrass them to the point where they are, they're going to think about losing... They're going to think about leaving their entire account, right? That's one of the great things, in my opinion, that's come from Facebook... And from YouTube, um, is that we finally have like these account, these online accounts that we don't want to sacrifice, right? Because because we've got time in them. You know what I mean? And that makes people act right. That makes people actually not be such fucking shitbags. And that's a really good thing. So if you then compound that with outing them in front of everyone and saying hey look this person is a horrible human being then me you know what i mean then there's some there's some like leverage i guess you could say i don't know man i don't got the answers just random thoughts doxing for justice sick of life 90 says um don lad says uh they'd be out here but i'll give it to him first uh never do it to somebody else yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> RC Ritter says, I certainly don't want to piss off my 12 subscribers. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And it, it, like, I'm, 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 uh, I used to be, I used to fly off the handle like this a lot more often, and, and I'm, I'm kind of proud that I've been able to get myself in check, um, a lot better because it's the, the the other thing you have to be really careful of is that it, nothing is ever black and white some things are um but you got to be really careful because it's like i mean just, just ragging, ragging on on 
and that, that that that's the thing, right? Like with politics, you do have to be really careful because because there there can in some cases be like legitimate things on on both sides, but like just coming into a live chat and insulting someone the way that somebody looks, like I'm sorry, but you're I'm gonna I'm gonna destroy you, like there is just no, there is not a single shred of you know what I mean? Like there there are not two sides to that. That one side to that is a horrible person who I think should get demolished in front of everyone. And on the other side of that, there is a person who is going to like I would just putting myself in 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 Blunty's shoes in that situation, that would fuck up like my whole week. Like for real. And and it's and I know like oh, don't let the trolls get to you and and all that shit, but like Sorry, I'm a human being. I have, like, actual human being emotions. And that shit fucks me up. Like, even though it's it's obviously a garbage person doing it, um, it, it still, for whatever reason, makes my brain go, Oh, yeah, that's right. I knew it. I knew that you were an ugly person. And everybody knows about it, but nobody's willing to say it. Right? Like, that's... That's where people with mental illnesses' brains go, I think. Um, although, I, I'll bet you that's where everybody's brain goes. I, I bet you even the people who say, yeah, I just rise above it and ignore it. Um, I'll bet you as soon as they're done saying that, when the camera is off, they're... You know what I mean? They're, they're just saying that. They're, that's just them putting on a brave face. Because, like... I don't know. I don't know, man. I just try to, like, take my own experiences and, and the things in my life that have made me feel horrible. And, um... And just, when, when I see people doing that to, to others, I, I, I really make it a point to try to stand up for them. And, and because th there have been times that people have done that for me. And it's been... And, and it, it's, it, there's just nothing, there's nothing more flattering than, than like, not flattering, but there's nothing, nothing nicer than somebody else having your back, you know what I mean? Um, it just, it really, that really takes the sting out of what the person said. Uh, and maybe that's just me being vain or a narcissist or whatever, but, um... That's been my experience as a as a person, and I'm willing to bet that there are many others, <laughs> most of you, that have had that same sort of experience, you know what I mean? If you've ever had anything like that happen. Crunked is all about shitting in their cereal. <laughs> He's all about it. All about it. Um, Sick of Life says, the best thing is seeing the amount of nuts you have to work with right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good on the nuts, though. We're we're uh, we're nutted up. We're all set. Uh, I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna orient this uh, flight controller the way that they want me to with the uh, with the arrow facing forward. I can actually use even taller standoffs here, uh, which I just might. Um. What do I got? Some reds? Alright, I'm gonna go put some I'm gonna put some reds on here. This this thing is gonna look so fancy. There's a chance oh, hold on though. There's a chance that I'm gonna sell this. And if I'm gonna sell it, I don't necessarily want all my super fancy hardware on there. Because then I'll have to reorder all the fancy hardware. Uh, the reason why I say I might sell this is because it's not a glide, basically. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sort of all in on the glides, mainly because, and, and one of the big reasons is that with the glide, there are just a lot more options than this frame. There, the the stock arms are Truex, which I really like. Um, there are uh, Dead Cat arms available, which is a big deal because then you can drop down to like zero up tilt and still get no props in view. Um, the glide is a little bit lighter than this. Uh, I can run the standoffs really low in the glide. 
Um, the Glide has better uh, motor protection, in my opinion, at the ends of the arms. So, yeah, this rig, we'll see. I mean, if it, if it absolutely melts my brain and it is, like, way better than a Glide, then, I, yeah, I can almost guarantee you I won't sell it. But frame design, I don't know, frame design is at a... At a bit of a plateau. Uh, the guys, it's the, the guys that do it have have been doing it for long enough that they've gotten really good at it, and it shows. Um. So, yeah, the, I can all but guarantee this is going to get sold. <clears throat> I hope it doesn't. I I hope that um I hope that magically my brain is is blown and this frame is way better than the glide but I'm gonna take a uh, I'm gonna take a guess <laughs> mr. Huggy says purple it out and then make your signature build so it's all broken and bashed um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys the real reason that I'm doing this um, just because yeah I think you guys can handle it um, I don't have enough hardware to do this in all purple I would have to mix purple with red, and I'm not going to do that. I, uh, I'm better than that. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I do, I can do it in all purple, but in order to do it in all purple, I would have to use these knurled ones, and then these hex ones, and I'm not doing that shit either. I'm sorry, it's just not going to go down that way. It ain't going down that way. Um, it either matches, or I'm not doing it. So, you know, in case anybody was wondering how off the reservation I really am, now you know. Now, you know. <laughs> I know, Krug. It's, I've done the, I've mixed the purple and, and, and red, uh, uh, aluminum before on rigs and I, I just don't I don't like the way it looks <laughs> just, it's like I'm a, a crazy like this is it guys this is this is your boy um, th this is not healthy <laughs> this is not a healthy uh, brain that is uh, is speaking to you right now but I was born this way. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm just trying to cope. I'm just trying to cope, guys. This is, uh, this is a coping mechanism right here. Or it's me making excuses. You be the judge. You be the judge. Come on! Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> the first, like, uh, the first couple revisions of glide builds had a mix of purple and red and like I don't I don't like I like this I like the color uh, the, the the shade of anodized red and I like the shade of anodized purple separately but I don't like them together for whatever reason and like if I look at a rig and I'm like Ugh, that looks so stupid I, I'm, that's, that's not good, that's not the, the, that's not what I want my brain, I want to look at my rigs and be like, Ooh, yeah, that's a sexy beast. <laughs> um, yeah. Because I'm a lunatic. <laughs> Sick of life says green hater. <laughs> no, green is fine, it's just not like... I, I, I committed to the red and purple thing with the logo, and, and I'm going with it. I was never, uh, I was never, like, a fan of the color purple. I was never really a fan of the color red either, but, uh, when Kristen did the logo and used those two colors, I was like, ooh, that looks cool. In, like, those shades in the logo look cool. Um, away we go. I never, I, I guess, I, I also didn't, I don't have, like, a favorite color. Um, 
A grown adult asked me what my favorite color was not too long ago, and I was taken aback. I almost responded with, why does that fucking matter? Or like, why do you give a fuck? <laughs> but instead, I think I... I remember being like, what? Because uh, uh, what? I, I just kind of couldn't believe that, that an adult asked me that. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I feel like I haven't been asked that since I was a, a, a really small child. Um... I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a small talk guy though. I have absolutely no interest in going to a bar and meeting new people and spending an hour talking about religion or, or any of these other safe small talk small talk topics. Um, I'm a much fa bigger fan of big talk. Like literally, <laughs> I, I, I just um, yeah. I have no interest in small talk. None. Uh, Sick of Life says, Maybe they wanted to pick you out a nice man, Thong. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, AD says, Why would it matter? Same paging. Favorite color, small talk. True. Yeah, totally fair. Uh, uh, it, oh, no, uh, here's why it matters. Um, because, uh, we have a limited, we have a limited amount of time, uh, on the earth. And I think that, it just for me, in, in that limited amount of time that I have, I don't want to waste it on small talk. That, that's my, um, that's my, I mean, you're, you are right, AD. It, it is, yeah, you could add, you, it, it's totally fair just to say, like, why does it matter? But, uh, yeah, that is the real reason. Like, I, I just I want my spe I want to spend my life with big talk. Um, that's what I think is important. I think small talk is is just sort of a waste of time. You know, um, there just there's a lot there's a lot of shit that needs to get done, and uh, I would rather talk about that big scary stuff than just like doggy paddle talking about uh, small things until I die. Facing your own mortality uh, changes things, and it it's um, yeah it, it drastically changes you as a person when when you realize that it, there is an end and, and it is gonna end and it, and it could end tomorrow. Um, it's a having mental illness uh, has a way of uh, really grounding you in that way, um, especially when you have it really bad to the point where it can cause you to um, get into situations where you have to face death. And yeah, it, uh, it's, it's important. We, we, don't, uh, we don't talk about or think about death in America. It's, it's like taboo. It's, it's just like, no, don't, don't think about it. We're all immortal. We're all going to live forever. And fortunately, we're not going to live forever. And I say fortunately because I've seen enough movies about people that are immortal to know that being immortal is not great because you got to watch everybody in your life constantly die. And that's no fucking fun. It's more fun to die with them. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sick of Life says avoid the Chicago area unless you want to talk about the weather constantly. Really, Sick of Life? Ugh, really? Uh, I guess because the weather is... is is very volatile. It's all people talk about. Don Lad says, uh, I'm the same if I break prop and don't have the same color. Uh, I change it a lot, uh, and all my hardware needs to be the same, and I can't run odd color motor in the quad. It needs to look good. Um, Don, you, you make me feel better in that I think you might be a little crazy, crazier than I am um, on the prop thing. Uh, the prop thing I can totally... Well, it's probably because I crash so much that putting a, an odd colored prop on it's only going to be on there for about 10 minutes before I destroy it and get to take it off um, yeah I can uh, I can totally excuse wacky colored props um, but yeah everything else on the rig everything that like stays on the rig that doesn't constantly get changed out I guess is uh, that's my line in the sand <laughs> across this line you do not if everyone doesn't know what movie that's from, you're all fired. 
Although that might be a hard one, actually. Do you guys know what that quote's from? That that's uh, now that I think about it, that, that that is maybe a little bit of an obscure quote that you guys might not be able to get. Uh, cross this line, you do not. I think you guys are gonna get it though. I'm pretty sure you get. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I had a feeling. I had a feeling that was an easy one. <clears throat> uh, if you didn't, if you weren't able to get that, and you're brave enough, post it. Say it in the chat. Cop to it. If you're not a Big Lebowski fan, cop to it so I can ban you. <laughs> oh, Double A, you didn't get it? Oh, come on, dude. All right, turn this stream off and go watch Le Big Lebowski again. You gotta, come on, you gotta, you gotta, uh, you gotta get on board, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah. You have to have watched that movie. I, I think, as a as a card carrying nerd, um, I think you have to have seen the Big Lebowski at least into the double digit number of times. I, I think, at least ten times. That's a good number. I think within within ten viewings, I feel like you'll um, you'll be able to quote the whole thing. And that's really, to me, that's really kind of a necessity like if you guys are ever wondering like oh what's it what's it take to be friends with Ciotti um I gotta be honest this, this might be one of them to like to get into the inner circle <laughs> where no one wants to be <laughs> um yeah you, you gotta be in the you gotta be in the double digits on uh, on Big Lebowski viewings I don't know why it's a requirement it just is no, I do know. It's one of the best movies of all time. It's one of the best comedies of all time. Uh, dark comedy, but comedy nonetheless. Um, I think, to me, the king of dark comedies, though, is uh, American Beauty. Which most people don't even consider to be a comedy. Um, I don't think I do either. I don't think I consider it to be a regular comedy. It's, it's either a dark comedy or it's drama. Uh, either or. Um, in uh, in one of my film classes back at uh, at university, my uh, I did a at some point a twenty page paper on it was supposed to be on the whole movie, uh, but there's so much symbolism in there uh, that and, and like brilliant symbolism. Uh, that it ended up being a 20-page uh, thesis on the first half hour of uh, The Big Lebowski. Uh, it really, like, behind the, the, just, yeah, it's, I'm sorry, not Big Lebowski, uh, uh, American Beauty. It's, uh, yeah, th there's a lot going on. There, there's a lot of really deep, dark, buried shit going on in that movie, and I fucking love it. Um, I don't watch, it's, it's funny, I, um, I watch the movie a lot to, to be able to write that, and, um, <clears throat> started to kind of burn out, burn out on the movie, and kind of, like, I, I now specifically, like, don't watch the movie very much, because I, I just want it to last forever, I don't want to, uh, drive it into the ground, so I actually, I don't watch American Beauty much at all, um, it's, I just recently watched it uh, last year at some point, but before that I hadn't watched it in like 10 years. And it's it might be my favorite movie of all time. Um, there's a really good chance. I, I haven't thought about that in a long time. It, it used to be uh, it used to be in my like solid top three. I don't know if I could ever actually pick just one film, but um, yeah, it may very well be the top for me. Just uh, I don't know it. Um, that movie as and uh, Garden State is is firmly up in the top three with me as well. Those two movies connect with me in a in in a in a very different um, not different difference not the right word. Uh, they they connect with my life experiences in a very interesting way, and um, and they're really good. And they're just really, really phenomenal. 
pieces of work. Um, Sick of Life says, what? Flight Club, hands down. Fight Club, hands down. Flight Club's a great movie. Uh, Slideby says, what are your thoughts on Rudder Riot Rampage this year? Uh, I think if it's 100% safe by that point, that it's going to be an absolute blast, and I will be there. Um, if there is even a little bit of bullshit going on with the virus, I will not be there. Um, the, uh, the main man at FPV Exchange, Nevin, uh, is a doctor. And so he knows more about the virus than any of us, uh, from firsthand experience, working with it all day, every day. And, um, he recently commented on... Uh, one of the posts about Rampage just sort of giving hit and, and he, he was just honest about where he's at with it and, and very quickly hearing him talk about it it became very I realized that even though I've been um, even though I've been good and, and I've been conscious of it and um, I haven't gotten it right. Um, that's one of the ways that you know you've been that you've been distancing properly um, and just paying attention, basically. Uh, very quickly, reading him talk about this virus, I realized that I'm not being careful enough, and that there's absolutely no chance. And one of the things that Nevin said that like really blew me away. Um, he said unequivocally, and like his business is to get onto airplanes. If, if like I know Nevin, so I have to explain that. Um, like him not being able to fly is a really big problem. And he said unequivocally, he will not get on an airplane until 2022. Like full stop. No matter what happens with vaccines, just of what he knows from working with this and seeing it and just being in that world, right? He's going to know a thousand times as much as we do. Um, yeah. He uh, ain't touching an airplane with a 10-foot pole. And that says... I, I try to listen to people who are really knowledgeable about subjects, and that's what Nevin is on this topic. So I'm not going to be... I'm not going to just, like, ignore it, you know, and bury my head in the sand. I'm going to take it really seriously. So, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it seems pretty unlikely to me that, that it's going to be totally good to go by then. And um, as Nevin put it, I'm not invincible. Uh, and that's kind of it. Like, believe me, I want to go and, uh, like, the the first Rampage was, I mean, it was just, it, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. It was magical. It was, like, I'll never forget it. But I don't want Rampage to be the last thing I do. You know what I mean? So, I probably won't be there. Because there, it probably won't be safe. Um, my, my, my definition of safe. Right? It's, it's okay for people to have different definitions of the word safe. Where the hell does this one go? Oh, it goes in here. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to die. I don't want to die of COVID, that's for sure. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not a great thing to... Uh, yeah, it's not a great thing to get. Test pilot ERB says, "Hey, what's a good cell count for a twelve o something five thousand kV?" Uh, so it depends on prop size. Test pilot, uh, basically, five thousand kV on four S is gonna rip on a two and a half inch prop. It's even gonna rip pretty good on a two inch propeller. Um, and then if you go up to a three inch propeller um it's going to be a little bit too too high of a kv for 4s but you can just motor scale it down so unless that's a really lightweight rig uh i'm going to suggest 4s 
Uh, AD says, are you originally from the Florida area? I am not. I'm from New Jersey. Uh, I'm in Virginia. Just to be transparent, Big Lebowski for the win, although 30-plus-year-olds have a treasure trove of 90s indie film before uh, indie went mainstream. Yeah, it's so fucking true, AD. So true. License to Drive says, okay, then, uh, name the film from this quote. I've done dot, 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 questionable things, uh, also extraordinary things. Oh, my God. I, I recognize it, but um, I'm not going to be able to pick it out. I can tell you right now, I'm not going to be able to pick it out. Uh, Slideby says, thanks, uh, I'm not on Facebook to see this info anymore. Uh, you came to the right place then, Slideby. Always come on over, and uh, and we'll, we'll give you plenty of people in here that are on Facebook all the time. That'll give you the inside scoop. Uh, RC Ritter FPV says, how much efficiency do you lose scaling back motors? Uh, does it still stress the ESC? Uh, according to Ryan Harrell, who runs Mini Quad Test Bench, uh, and is basically the guy that has more motor and ESC knowledge than anyone else in FPV, um, who's also a friend of mine, uh, Ryan says that the lo the efficiency losses in motor scaling versus buying the correct KV uh, are negligible. And in my testing, I've found that to be true. Uh, I have two glides. One of them's on uh, 1800 or 1850 kV motors scaled down. The other one's on uh, scaled down a little bit, and then the other one's on 2400 kV scaled down a lot. Um, and I can't tell a difference between those two rigs. Uh, I am looking forward to doing a fully blind test um, of that, but. It's, even without the blind test, if I can't feel a difference, then, and if I can't see a difference in flight time, then I don't care, <laughs> right? Like, I know, I know that kind of, that might sound nuts, but, like, it's, it's true. I, I, I don't care if, if there's, if it's not, if there's not, like, a difference that's jumping out at me, um the advantages to using motor scaling vastly outweigh um, a, a potential theoretical efficiency difference that I can't uh, that I can't draw out or feel so yeah um, I don't have any where the hell are all my VTXs Do I honestly not have... What the hell's going on? I could use this gigantic TBS Evo, but I was going to use this and or even like sell this potentially with the... with this Fetech build. Um, yeah, I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use that, that's silly. Although, wait, isn't that, isn't that Evo, don't people run that because it has, like, its own wacky OSD on it or some weird shit? What is this, man? Uh, Test Pilot says, it's for the Racer X Twig. It can take 3-inch props and weighs 76 grams. Okay, all right, so throw everything I just told you out the window. That, that's a, that rig is way too light for 4S. Uh, you want either 2S or 3S. I would go 3S and just get the smallest 3S's you can find. Um, like 3, uh, 350 MAH, 450 MAH, or 400 MAH, 450 MAH. Uh, yeah, get those. And, and you, uh, with a rig that light, you still might need to motor scale it down. But yeah, you'll figure that out. It's easy to do. You can even do it in the damn uh, OSD. I know where the VTXs are. They are over here. Waiting for love. Ha! There we go. Found you, you sneaky little devil. Ooh, this one's got shrink wrap on it. One less thing to do. Now we're talking. Ah, shit. It's got the factory shrink wrap on it. That sucks. 
No, oh, that's okay. Uh, is this going to be long enough? Uh, this guy's going to be here. This guy's going to be back here. That's going to sit there. And nope, not quite long enough. All right, let me grab the other one. Okay. There we go. This one's gonna work. So we're just gonna zippity zap this right up to the flight controller. And let's get this out of the way. Oh my god. <laughs> Sick of Life says, can I ask, what's the most New Jersey thing you have ever seen? I, it's got to just be all the Guidos. Um, <laughs> I know that, like... <laughs> so, the Jersey Shore show, right? Um, was really terrible for all of us that lived in New Jersey at the time, because... Everybody thought that, like, everyone in New Jersey was like that. And, and they very obviously aren't. Um, but there are a lot of those people in New Jersey. Like, a shocking number of, <laughs> like, yeah, like, people that could be on that show. And, um... Some of the shit that those people do is very strange. Um, I can't think of any any uh, just uh, those the, the, let's let's call them the bad Guidos because I, I'm a Guido. Um, I'm I'm more than half Italian. My dad is a hundred percent Italian. Um, and we're, we're the good, uh, I'll call us, my dad and I are the good Guidos. <laughs> um, the, the, the bad ones have unfortunately kind of ruined, uh, the boardwalks of, of New Jersey, which really pisses me off because I grew up, uh, just all I wanted to do was, was hang out on the boardwalk growing up and then it really changed. Um, and it, and it really... It was never the same, and and maybe I don't know. It, it could totally, I could be totally full of shit, and maybe it's just because I got older, or maybe it's this, maybe it's that. Um, but yeah, it 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 fucking changed, man. It it changed the boardwalks, and it just made them like kind of scary, violent, like testosterone-y, uh, steroidy. Um, yeah, just not not fun places to be unfortunately and and they used to be they they used to be uh just awesome just super 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 fun so i guess maybe that would be the um that would be the the most jersey thing i've ever seen is is shitty people ruining the boardwalks maybe i don't know maybe i'm just talking shit well i mean we know i'm talking shit but uh, okay, so here we go. I'm going to cut this a little long. Let's say, how about there? And then we're going to get it rolling here. Oh, I'm getting hungry, though. Uh, Tiago says, yep, the Evo, Evo is used in KISS because it has OSD, also a crazy barcode configurator. Yeah, I knew about the barcode. I actually kind of like the barcode thing. I, I, I think that's an, a really interesting thing. Um, but the size and the price of that VTX, my god. Like, who is it? I guess I guess kiss people have no, yeah okay so I was about to say who's it who's it for who's it marketed towards at such an insane price and then I remembered that kiss stuff all costs a fucking fortune so uh, yeah there it is <laughs> that's who it's aimed at is uh, the um, the folks that got the money oh really why are these Copper stranded. Oh, whatever. Whatever. 
Hey, uh, there's there's electrical engineers in this chat, I think. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on these uh, copper inner wired uh, 30 gauge? Any, uh, I, I, I think I've used it, used them once or twice. I don't know where they came from, uh, but um, I don't know. They've worked when I've used them. Any, uh, any thoughts from the, from you big brain bastards? I gotta cut this one down a little bit. It's too long. There we go. I assume it's copper. It's it's the color of copper. If you guys need me to hold it up to the camera, I will. But I mean, it's just it's that co it's the color of a penny. Uh, if you're in another country. And you don't know what a penny is. It's the color of the Statue of Liberty. Wait, is the Statue of Liberty copper? Isn't the Statue of Liberty some weird-ass material? I think it's copper, isn't it? See, this is what you get with Antifa. Us, us, us Antifa. Um, we don't, uh, you know, we don't know anything about the. We're, we're not true patriots. <laughs> Basically. Uh, test pilot says all these wires are copper, just the silver or tin. Really? But what about when I cut into the middle of it? So do they, wait, they tin all the strands? Because when I when I cut into the middle of of normal thirty gauge wires, they're silver. Soldering iron went into hangout mode. Uh, wire is wire at the lengths in a quad. Yeah, see, sick life. That that's what I've been told too. That that's basically what my dad um, told me. Is like, look, you're you're as long as the wires aren't getting hot, you're fine. You're you you're not doing long runs. You're not doing anything super insane. Uh, Alexander FPV says I missed it. Where is the TPU butt from? Uh, Erod. Erod, yo, uh, he makes this piece, which I'm probably not going to use this piece, but I, I might, I might, you never know. Um, yeah, he makes this piece, and most importantly, he makes a front load uh, session mount. I wish, I, I, I wish he had little. Uh, I, I wish his design was identical to BMC 3D's design because BMC 3D's design is kind of perfect in a lot of ways. Um, but this is, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. There are, there are one of, one or two things that, in my opinion, could be improved on this. Um, but this is as good, but BMC 3D has completely spoiled me, um, with their magical front load, uh, session mounts that are just, like, perfect. You know, it, it, it's, if you do anything wrong, you've no longer matched perfection. And to me, BMC 3D's front-loading Session 5 mount is perfection. Like, the way it mounts, the way it protects the GoPro, um, uh, the little, the, the way that he's got the front lip set up, the little protectors that he has on there, uh, the thickness, the, the print quality, all the things. We are tinned up and ready to go. Let's do a thing. We are going to send the VTX Power TX3 video and ground. Look at that. All right next to each other. Just waiting to be zapped. And they are through holes in this Acon board, which I used to use. I, I, I used to be really good about using through holes, uh, but then eventually I stopped using them because what I found is that with a through hole, you you have to the, the wire ends up pointing straight up, and then I bend it down because I don't want the wires like sitting straight up, getting like twigs and shit tangled up in them. 
and then when you bend them over, you're you're putting a bend into the into the uh, wire, and eventually the wires all break. Whereas nowadays, I flat, I lay them flat and solder them, and it and it just, I have not had the same problem. I've not had that issue. I've I've not had the issue with thirty gauge wires breaking, ever since I started to solder them laying down like this. Um, to be honest, it drives me nuts. I would really rather use the holes because using the solder holes is super strong um, for if, if the wires get pulled, but only if they get pulled like in the direction of the hole. Like that That's the issue is that in, in our application, in my opinion, the, the, the holes are not the way to go. Uh, what I do like, I actually do like when the manufacturers use the holes, though, because it gives us the option, and I like that the holes suck up some of the solder. Um, when you then solder a wire down, since solder travels towards heat, uh, some of the heat comes up, and it gives you a really nice little joint. Um, so yeah, I love when manufacturers use through holes, I just don't use the damn through holes. And I think I, I, I think, in fairness, I would rather have a big pad than a through hole. Like I, I don't think I prefer. I think I would, best case scenario, would be a big pad, rather than a, than a through hole. But like I'm cool with the through holes. You know what I mean? Like I'm okay with them. I'm, I'm, I'm chill with them. I've. Uh, the through holes and I have come to an understanding, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're friends. <laughs> Fuck am I saying? Oh my god, these are all coming out so pretty. Ugh, man. Stuff. Fuck building fast, man. We build, we build beautiful, and then we just deal with not having any time left to fly it. <laughs> A little too close to the to the pad right next door. Let me just move this little guy over. Tiny little amount. There we go. That's better. Okay, and the plan with this guy is to kind of keep it, keep it over this way. So, um, let's just give these wires a little tug here, like this. Um, I always recommend that you just push on the solder joint, just to make sure. Oh God, excuse me. Just to make sure it's not going to let go. Um, if it does let go, you consider yourself very lucky because that would have happened in the air. And then always, always, always check your work with a 5X loop. If you're not checking your work with a 5X loop, you have lost your goddamn mind. This is like $4. Uh, scroll down in the description. There's an affiliate link to one on Amazon. Um, this in life, as an adult in life, have one of these. This is, yes, you look like a goddamn idiot when you use it oh, I can't show you because I made this wire too tight um, well here I'm not gonna give you guys a full screen but yeah you look like an asshole using it but guess what nobody sees you using it because you use it when you're at home um, your girlfriend and or wife and or boyfriend uh, will probably make fun of you uh, but that's okay it's gonna be it's gonna be all right sometimes it's uh, G give them, g give that to them. Let let them, let them make fun of you. And then you can remember it, and then uh, you can return the favor. In a, in a, in the future. Beep tube with a dollar ninety nine and the cool little new logo. Thank you, Beep tube. Very cool of you. No comment. Just sending some love. Much appreciated. Uh, Tiago says, shouldn't everyone be Antifa's? I mean, I think so. I think, um, I think that being against fascism is, is a really good thing. Um, 
Just, you know, if nothing else. Uh, people in Europe that suffered from fascists probably have the same opinion I have. History uh, have, have stupid behavior uh, of repeating itself. Yeah, unfortunately, that's true. Uh, Newcomb says silver plated, I mean. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Sick of Life says, hey, we have the same soldering iron. Do you have a Weller 1010 Sick of Life? Do you like it? I like mine. I think it's great. Test Pilot ERB says uh, it's called copper clad aluminum. Uh, and the other is oxygen free copper, OFC. No shit. My name's Aaron Ciotti, and I learned something today, as I do every day. Um, Go Kart Mozart says Statue of Liberty is copper over an iron frame. I knew it. I knew it was copper. Um, uh, yes, they pre tin the, the strains. Uh, the tin helps with corrosion. Some wire can be silver coated for better conductivity. Um, we had uh, Go Kart Mozart, and then Test Pilot, and then Newcomb with those four comments. Nice. I, I, I had absolutely no idea. I had absolutely no clue. Uh, Sick of Life says, I've never checked a single joint in my quad with a loop. I use a microscope uh, on like SM, on SMD soldering, but quad pads are huge. Uh, have you had an eye exam lately? Um, I actually have really good vision, believe it or not. I, I have, for all of my life, I've had better than 20-20 vision. I think it's like 40-20 is, is the next better whatever vision. The, the quantification um now that i've now that i'm deep into my almost out of my 30s uh i can all but guarantee you i don't have 2040 or, or better than 2020 vision anymore but i still have really good vision um i don't know i just like to uh, well these are these are these pads are small well my my idea of small is, is very different than yours but um yeah, I don't know. I just like to uh, see it closer. And I find that with the loop, um, it like if there's a problem, it like jumps out at me. And it's just like, hey, fix me, bro. So yeah, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big loop guy. I'm a looper. What am I saying? What am I saying? Okay. Cool. Uh, next camera. What am I doing? Micro Eagle. Okay. Neat. Uh, is this the bot? Is this the Micro Eagle size? I forget. Hey, yes it is. So what do I need? Uh, okay, there it is. That's what I need. <laughs> Uh, nope, no it's not. Oh wait, yep, yep, this is the one. Wow, okay, it was sitting right on top. Neat. Uh, wait, no, 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 no. This is gonna be, I bet you I have a really short one in here somewhere. I'm not gonna burn this nice long one. Um, I think I have a short one. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it. This box is my, is the, the proof of how much testing I've done <laughs> because this box has and of course there, there's a short one but that's a little too short um, yeah if you ever thought if I've ever said like oh, I've tested 25 of these and you've thought like you're full of shit there's no way you've tested 25 of those um, I have not bought purchased any of these and this is only one box Here's another box. Every single one of these has come from a component. Well, just trust me, this box is full. Listen, see how it barely rattles? It's because it's full. Um, yeah, these are, these are left over. I've saved every single one from every camera or flight controller or VTX or, or ESC. Um, ooh, I think this is the one. I think that's the one right there. Um, so yeah, I've blown up a lot of shit. What can I say? Uh, and most of it's been blown up from crashing hard, not from just failing at life and <laughs> putting positive to negative. But, as many of you that have watched these streams for a while know, I ain't infallible. I've blown up, I've blown shit up and wired shit wrong on these streams before in front of all you guys. And I'm glad that I have, because it's a part of the game, and um, 
it feels horrible when it happens but yeah just remember that it happens to every single one of us even after we've done this many builds <laughs> it's just um, yeah it's uh, it's what happens when you build high <laughs> among other things um, yeah it's uh, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunities to fuck up when you're building these things and unfortunately when you're new that's compounded by like a million and the other thing that's really annoying when you're new if you're anything like me is like when I was new I was trying to spend as little money as possible so that I could just get up in the air and like see if I wanted to do this like see if this was gonna be the hobby for me um, so like when so I got the baby hawk first thank fucking Christ I did um, so I had the baby hawk and then I was able to like take I took a lot of pictures of that before I first took it apart so I had like this reference guide this is why uh, I'm I'm very torn on whether or not to recommend uh, bind and flies to new people versus build it yourself but I'm I am on the side of bind and fly rigs um, because yeah, it gets you up in the air, and it, and it gets you a taste. And with how frustrating building and repairing can be, I think that if you haven't gotten that taste yet, there's a good chance you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it over the first or the second blown up ESC. Um, whereas if you've gotten that taste of flight, that gives you... Um, it gives you that extra like drive to, to actually stick with it and be willing to put up with the unbelievable amount of bullshit in this fucking hobby. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh my fuck. I don't... I, I can't really... I don't think I can say that motorsport is any better. Uh, motorsport is a very different frustration. Um, but... I feel like this hobby... <laughs> I feel like this hobby has a higher frequency of frustration uh, than than many other hobbies. You know what I mean? Like, I, I find myself <laughs> just, like, infinitely frustrated way more often with this hobby than uh, kind of like any other I think I've ever had. <laughs> Which sounds terrible, but... Every single fucking one of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you don't, screw you. If you haven't had as hard of a time as the rest of us had in this hobby, then then I hate you. <laughs> I don't actually hate you, but I do. I fucking hate you. Oh, Christ. Anybody who hasn't, like, full-blown suffered in this hobby. Oh, I'm so goddamn jealous. It's, it's hate because of jealousy. It's hate. It's 100% jealous rage. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it's, um, what a, uh, what a weird hobby that we've all stubbornly latched Shut onto. Uh, Vicious Stitches in the house. I was just reading your comment and then YouTube did the thing. There it is. Uh, good to see you too as well, my friend. I haven't seen you on here in a little bit. Sick of Life says, um, I used to own an iPhone repair shop. Nice. Uh, in the iPhone four days, so I got to use tiny, uh, so I got used to tiny soldering. Very cool, Sick of Life. Hey, uh, Sick of Life, what's the, um, what's the magic? Is there a, oh wait, no, never mind. Never mind. I don't need to anymore. I, uh, I, I. I have a um, an old iPhone with a broken screen, and I was going to ask you, uh, but it's got a uh, it's got a 64 it's got 64 gigs of memory. So what I've been using this for is uh, the Insta360 Go. The the Insta360 Go onboard storage is only like four gigs, so it fills up pretty quick. Um, so I've been using this to just dump this into. It's like as a hard drive, um, but the screen is like fucking mangled. My 
parents surprised me for Christmas with a, a, a new iPhone SE, which is 64 gig as well, so I don't really need this anymore. So in that respect, as a hard drive, um, so I don't need the screen to be fixed anymore. I was gonna ask you what's the hot, uh, cheap way to get the screen fixed, but I'm actually gonna start using this as a webcam. Um, I started watching uh, Harris uh, Keller, Ke Car Harris Heller, Harris, Harris Heller, I forget his name. Um, and yeah, he shows on one of his videos an application you can download on here that turns it into a little webcam that he says works really well. So I'm gonna put it up here and then I'll have a, the problem is I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do about a cable. If I have it up here, I'm gonna have to run an iPhone cable like down and around and it's, it's gonna have to sort of be a pain in the ass. But yeah, extra, n extra webcam coming soon. I don't know, whatever. Bill Pollard just became a patron. A patron. Thank you, Bill. If you're in the chat, I assume you're in here. Thank you, brother. Very cool of you. Um, anybody else that wants to join the collective, uh, we're having a ton of fun over on Patreon. There's a lot of really good stuff over there. Um, daily streams. Nacho Suarez. <laughs> what a great name. Nacho Suarez just became a patron as well. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, lots of cool stuff going over on Patreon. Um, daily... Uh, the, the replays of daily streams are up there, so like literally by joining the Patreon uh, for as long as I can muster, you're going to get um, daily live streams from me. If you're quick enough, you can just catch me on YouTube daily because I don't make them private um, while I'm streaming, like right now, they are public. Uh, but the replays of the non, like Sunday streams, Monday streams, Wednesday streams, those are going to be public forever. Um, so my, my thought process is I give everyone three streams a week, uh, maybe four. This week it's going to be four because Five Inch Friday, uh, for free. You don't have to do anything other than click subscribe to, to get access to those forever. Replays, live, whatever. Um, the other couple days a week, I feel totally okay them being a little bit more Patreon only um, to reward the folks that are supporting me and allowing me to continue to do this. I, I, I find that to be a very fair... Uh, split. If you don't, then you're wrong. <laughs> because you, you can't... I know that a lot of people give everything away, and that's great, uh, but those people have day jobs, and I don't. This is my day job, so I have to charge for things. Um, and if you're not okay with that, then I, I think that you should reevaluate things, because you're not living in in the same world of reality that the rest of us are. Sorry to be the person that, that had to break that news to you, but... Testpilot ERB says, Have you tried orange-labeled uh, ovoid? Did you mean ovonic? Uh, I think you meant ovonic. Is C next to D? C is next to D. Uh, ovonic lipos yet any good? Uh, I have not. I, I didn't even know those existed. I literally just got... Uh, my Well, I flew some... Uh, 4S 1500 Ovonics that were good. They were super heavy. Um, this is the first lightweight Ovonic battery uh, that I've, that's been man, god damn it, OBS. Keystrokes are broken. Uh, yeah, this is the 6S 1000 uh, and thus far I'm not impressed at all. Thus far it, it doesn't hold a candle uh, to to the battery that I've been running, which is the uh, the Tattoo R Line 6S 1050. Uh, that being said, I've tested a lot of 6S batteries, and none of them could compare to the performance of the Tattoo. So that I'm not saying that that Ovonic battery isn't good. I'm saying that the the Tattoo R Lines are spectacular. And those just aren't up to snuff, which makes a lot of sense. The the tattoo R lines are thirty bucks a battery. Those are like twenty bucks a battery. Go figure. You get what you pay for. So uh, Alexander says, so many cardboard boxes. Go to Harbor Freight and get yourself some parts organizers. Um, I do have. I have quite a few parts organizers, um, but this um, this toolbox here. I try to keep absolutely everything uh, in this toolbox here, and there are certain 
like little little pockets of the toolbox where very specific boxes fit really nicely. Um, yeah, like there you can see all the all the organizers. And yeah, this this is a, a good little spot. I I I, I kit a I try to re uh, reduce reuse recycle as, as much as possible because I'm a little bit of a of an eco green freak. Um, I grew up with a father that worked in alternative energy, uh, plasma fusion to be specific. And yeah, he instilled values on me that are basically that you know yeah reuse as much stuff as possible so that's that's one of the reasons that i i do try to reuse boxes that i would anything like right before i throw something away i just like take a, a half a second to look at it and be like can i use this for something yes great no all right that's fine um and yeah so those two reasons i uh, i continue to use those stupid little run cam boxes <laughs> Uh, what pisses me off about those run cam boxes is they're hard to open, like the, like, but they're only hard to open uh, when I pack them sloppily. If I if I pack the wires in there nicely and none of the wires uh, gouge out of the side of the damn thing, it's it's totally fine. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a weird guy, man. Leave me alone. <laughs> I do actually need. I I did use up the last one of my little uh, parts organizer things. I gotta get. I gotta get some more. Next time I'm, next time I think about it I'm, and I'm over by Fry's, I'll just stop in. They, they have them there. Um, I love these, man. I, I I have like, I must have like a dozen of these things. They fit really well in the in the bag that I use, the low pro bag. They fit really well in the in the drawers of this of this toolbox. Um, yeah, I really like these things. Highly recommended, and you can get them anywhere. They and they cost like nothing. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, Sick of Life says today on the CLF TV show, how do you deal with hoarding? <laughs> oh shit! Slide by says this is why I stopped for the last eight months, but ready to come back to the pain. <laughs> Welcome back, Slide by. I hope your time off was <laughs> was was glorious. Sure it was. Alexander says, just went flying while you've been building and snapped an arm. Good times. Uh, Alexander, think of it this way. There is a chance that by that arm snapping, it reduced the impact into the motor enough that it saved your motor. Um, that is one of the... That is one of the things that... Uh, that I, I pride myself on having been able to help Kebab with in the, in the, the glide frame. Um, is giving him a shitload of uh, crash test data with broken arms so that he could continue to tune the, um, the, the thickness in different parts of the arm so that there's not a weak point, but at the same time so that the arm will let go when, like, the energy of the crash becomes enough energy that, like, there's kind of no hope. Right, um, breaking it like having an arm break is the easiest and cheapest and safest possible failure point, um, and yeah, I'm I'm very glad that I was able to have something to do with that just by flying his prototype glide frame a lot and breaking a ton of arms, and every single time I would break an arm, I would take a picture of it and send it to him, um, and yeah, he would then go back and tweak and. It's uh, one of the it's it's one of the other reasons that um, I've sort of settled on that frame. I've I've flown frames with with stronger arms. I've flown frames with weaker arms, and I find the glide arms to be the perfect mix of of strong enough to resist a whole bunch of crashes. But then, yeah, after a while, they do a wear out as all arms do. But b if you just really really put a ton of force into it it will let go and i've had a bunch of a bunch of crashes with like mangled arms and the motors are completely fine and when i was flying stronger frames that was not the case as soon as i started flying stronger frames um my the number of motors i was having to replace went like nuclear and 
I very quickly, like very quickly, the hobby became a lot more expensive because arm because motors are so much more expensive. Um, and I noticed it. I noticed that all of a sudden, like I couldn't afford to fly anymore. And I and after much uh, trying to figure that out, because initially I was like, "Why the hell is this happening? Like I'm I should be spending less money because I'm flying a heavier, more sturdy frame." Um, but yeah, I, I realized that like, how many motors have I been through lately? I feel like I haven't been this through this many motors in the whole time I've been flying five inch, and I hadn't. Um, something's gonna break. We uh, th are, these rigs have too much performance, and they and and that's it. I mean, if we flew smaller batteries, smaller motors, it probably wouldn't be an issue. But we don't. We we build these things that have ten to one power to weight ratio that can go from sitting still to a hundred actual miles an hour in about a second and that's just crazy uh vicious digit says it's me been meaning to nacho suarez says that would be me uh he also says thanks to you man really enjoy your content thanks brother uh enjoy both of you guys welcome to the collective your official members um beep tube with a five dollar super chat thank you beep tube uh, Z Carella says, ready 2021, coming at you with this bomb. <laughs> what bomb? Thank you, BeepTube. Uh, Tiago Ramos with an up arrow says, uh, pointing to Neil Camera. Hey, guys, uh, I've always heard and seen the word patron. What is it? Uh, is it the same as being a member of a group? Uh, do you pay monthly for being a patron? Uh, Neil, uh, the easiest way is to probably just show you. Uh, Patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com is the website, and it is a site where people like me uh, can go on there and set up a little page, sort of like your Facebook wall, I guess you could say, uh, where we can post videos and, and attachments and um, just basically have a spot uh, where we can leave notes and, and post unique stuff. Um, and then we can set up these tiers so that you, so that people can support us at different tiers. Uh, so I, for example, have a $3, here, I'll show you. How would I show you the tiers? Well, I'll just log out. Uh, let me just log out and then you guys can see the actual tiers. When I'm logged in, it's, it's all ad mini. Uh, so, god damn keystrokes are down. I thought that I was already showing you guys. Um, so yeah, if you would like to support me, you don't have to. You can just, I mean, you, you can support me in other ways. Um, if you would like to support me in this way, which is my preferred way, Patreon is the closest thing that I have to a paycheck. Um, and it's just a really cool community of people. And I've, and I've caught, I've kind of fallen in love with this website where, people do cool shit and set these tiers up for you to support them and then you support them and they thank you and you feel great about it for just like a couple bucks a month and then you also get this cool window into like inside stuff that they're doing um whenever they make a post it automatically emails you which is pretty cool um and yeah it's just a really cool spot i i spend about a hundred dollars a month in in supporting other uh people on patreon um because I, I, I just truly believe in in this website and the ethos being like supporting each other. Um, I'm a I'm a stuff guy. I, I, I like buying lots of stuff. And buying things feels really good, right? Like buying things is that retail therapy experience that um, whether you like it or not <laughs> is is a real thing. Um, what I can tell you is that, supporting people feels even better um and then seeing the cool shit that those people do um yeah it's it it just feels real good um you're and and you're getting you're getting something for it you're not getting something tangible for it right um you're getting an experience hey that's it uh you're getting an experience out of it and um if there's one thing that I've learned from from Kristen, uh, my wonderful wife, it's the the value of experiences over things. Um, 
so yeah there's a the, that's those are some of my thoughts on patreon um and so yeah three bucks a month is general admission it gets you access to the patreon page with all the things all the posts that i do all the previous posts uh pid tuning information filter tuning information uh builds all kinds of stuff um I, which i have kind of written out here um, but then um i have some other tiers for people that that want to support me more um and so the five dollar a month tier gets you entered into uh bi-weekly every other week uh tiny whoop and toothpick giveaways uh and then the ten dollar tier is the same thing but with micro brushless giveaways and like cinewoop uh, parts and whatnot and then the $20 a month is the five inch tier for five inch parts um, the prices go up as the price of the stuff that I buy to, to do the giveaways with goes up um, and then if so and the other nice thing is that if you only fly tiny whoops and toothpicks you can just join this tier and you'll only be entered to win those particular items right I wanted to try to not have a situation where it's like hey you won this thing that you have no use for whatsoever and now I'm gonna mail it to you and you're either gonna like second guess and, and maybe change and do a new build because of it or have to go through the hassle of selling it um, this is my way of trying to get you guys things that you'll take out of the mail and, and be able to use right um, if you have toothpicks and tiny whoops and micro brushless rigs and five inch rigs and you want to super duper support me I made this $30 all of the above tier that enters you into each individual one of these. So basically, this tier puts you into two giveaways a month, two giveaways a month, two giveaways a month, six giveaways a month. Um, so there's a lot of folks on this $30 tier um, because it enters you into a lot of giveaways. And quite honestly, most of those people have sort of like a free patreon membership because they've won enough stuff to cover the the the, the cost right um, speaking of that what I will say is I can almost guarantee you guys that if you join at three bucks a month I will save you more than three dollars a month in buying the wrong thing building the thing wrong and blowing it up um, I also will put posts up when I see like deals on the internet when I see a, a a bunch of clearance stuff that's actually like useful and not just garbage I'll put a post up and if you buy some of that clearance stuff hey you just paid for a couple months of patreon right so yeah I don't know I uh, I super dig it oh I wondered where I knew I, I made this like as a joke <laughs> this tier is just like a complete joke um, but I, I found this image on my desktop and I remembered making the image but I didn't remember why I made the image, and, and now, now I remember why. <laughs> um, but yeah, Patreon was a was an unexpected thing. Um, when I started doing these live streams, um, I had no intention whatsoever of, of having it turn into that. Um, but the the awesome people, some of which are still in this chat to this day, um, said like, "Yo, you should do a Patreon page, dude. Like, I want to." I would like to support you and I would like to see what you do on there uh, and as with many things that you guys bring up I just said okay I, I've I've been on a say yes journey um, in my uh, in my advanced age here at 39 whole years old and um, yeah I'm I'm I caught myself, I, de I developed a bad habit, if you could call it that, of uh, saying no, like, a lot, uh, too much. If somebody offers to help you, um, and you say no, it doesn't feel great, like, for that person either, right? Um, I, I I felt for me I think it was like this uh, it was like this pride almost of like I'm good I don't need anybody's help I can do everything alone um, and while that might be true that's not any way to live um, it, it 
it becomes sometimes you say no because for a good reason and and it, it can it's not always this easy but oh wait no I'm not gonna use that ground I'm gonna share grounds uh, so yeah it's it's not quite that easy but um, yeah I don't know I'm, I'm trying to say yes to more things and um, this stream and you guys have actually helped me with that because some of you guys have like offered things or, or said things to me and, and my, my initial inclination is like nah, nah I'm good um, but I've forced myself to say yes to those things and they've been really cool some of those things have been really fun uh, adventures that I wouldn't have been on so yeah say yes say yes to stuff sometimes within reason slippery slope on that one if I'm honest so I'm gonna share grounds here because I'm a I'm a sharing and caring kind of fella and it also uh, gives you cleaner video so why wouldn't you Uh, this is another reason that I like the through-hole pads, is that if I wanted to do this the right way, and I wasn't being such a lazy shit, um, I would solder this to the bottom of this pad, and I wouldn't have to play this little dancing game of putting two wires right on top of each other. But, I've put two wires on top of, the, of each other enough times that I can kind of do a pretty good job of it. Um, that's not perfect, but it is strong, so I'm actually going to leave it. Uh, Alright. What do we got going on here? What are you up to, little friend? Okay, you go over there, you come around there, and then, yeah, that's going to look nice. That's going to look real nice. Uh, thanks for asking about Patreon. That was a perfect little uh, little segue. I, I, I realize I haven't I haven't like fully explained Patreon in a while, um, and I didn't know about it. I didn't know about it before. Now nah, I guess I did know about it um, before you guys uh, browbeat me into doing it. Uh, Frank Nicholas has something he uses for storage. Very similar, yeah. Everything Mary Twenty One uh, clear clear plastic bead box. Yeah, there's like a million versions of of the uh, of those little of these little things, and they're all really good. So nice. Drone pilot just went for a drive to get some stuff. An hour drive, and it was uh, and was listening to you. Not sure that was a good thing. People were looking at me, just laughing in the car. <laughs> Alexander says, glad it broke. Motor is good to go. It's the crumple zone for a quad. Holy shit, Alexander, that's perfect. It's totally the crumple zone. <laughs> Drone Pilot says, I uh, need to find a way to uh, need to find a way to voice a message into YouTube while I'm driving though. Yeah. <laughs> Siri won't do that. Um, uh, Dauntless says, feel like I'm betraying the gods with the 3S 7500 KV 2 inch. Why, Dauntless? That's that's my preferred. Um, yeah, on two-inch propellers, uh, that's if you were to ask me, I'm building a two-inch rig with 7,500 kV motors. I would tell you, cool, run 3S. That that's the right choice. Uh, Weirdo the skateboard says, uh, so yeah, I don't sleep before it's not gonna happen. Weirdo can't sweep, sleep, sweep, great. Uh, he can't sweep either. He doesn't have a broom. Mark Beswick says, "Have you seen any of the videos created with the GyroFlow software that uses the black box gyro data to stabilize any camera footage?" Mark, I just heard about that for the first time, like I, I want to say, like two days ago. Uh, do me a favor, tell us everything that you know, Mark, and and tag me. Um, the rest of you guys, wh what do, what do you guys know about that? It's a really interesting uh, thing. Jack Lanois says, any ideas how the Tattoo Funfly batteries compared to the Tattoo R-Line batteries? Uh, Jack, the, the Tattoo Funfly batteries are a bit of a nightmare. Um, they, are, they are lightweight, which is nice, but they are not durable and they do not last very long. Um, I went through like four of them 
in about a month. It was really nasty. I will never buy the. I will never recommend those fun flies. Um, the tattoo R lines are. Uh, tattoo R lines are, the they're a Ferrari. Uh, the performance is out of this world. They're extremely lightweight. Uh, but you got to change their oil at normal intervals. You can't miss an oil change like you can with a Toyota Corolla. Um, our version of that is you can't over discharge them. Um, over discharging uh, tattoo R line batteries will kill them. It is about the only way that you can kill them, though. And most batteries, if you over discharge the shit out of them, um, you're going to kill them. China Hobby lines are very resistant to over discharging. Uh, GNBs are okay with it, uh, but yeah, the, the, the R-Lines are, they're not as expensive as the Adrenalines, um, they're a lot less expensive, they're, the Adrenaline, uh, equivalent is $10 more, so like, like, the, 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 the Eco batteries are typically around 20, the, the Tattoo R-Lines are 30, uh, the Adrenalines are 40, um, the adrenalines are heavier than the Tatsu R lines, and I've only flown one of them, but it didn't seem to have any performance advantage, any less sag or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I spend a little bit more for the for the Tatsu R lines, and I get a lot more performance out of them, and and I'm I'm cool with that. Thirty bucks per battery is not that bad. I I wish they were closer to twenty, but. There are lots of batteries that are closer to 20, and they're a lot heavier. Uh, Loon says, how long are you going to be on? Not too much longer. I am getting hungry, um, and I will die if I don't eat. Tristan says, hey, man, checking in. Always uh, good seeing uh, you on live. Thanks, brother. Good to have you. Uh, I always just tape my packs and try always to land at 3.6, 3.7. Yeah, if, if you run uh, Tattoo R-Lines or any of the expensive but lightweight batteries... Uh, down to only 3.5 per cell, you'll be completely fine. Uh, but when you're when you're really like in the moment, it's really easy to run a battery down a lot lower than that, and it ain't good for them. And the ones that are built to to make durability sacrifices for extra performance, you know what I mean? Nothing's free. Just because you spent more money on a battery doesn't mean it's going to be reliable. It, it means that it, you're going to get something for the extra money, hopefully. In our lines case, it's lightweight and, like, no sag. I've never experienced a battery that, like, will not give you a low battery warning under any... Circumstance I've been able to put it in for like three full minutes straight. It's crazy. I mean, outside of just like going full throttle and leaving it for 10 seconds straight, like that's gonna sag anything. But um, yeah, the R lines are mind blowingly good. Uh, like the, the I, I've, I've tested at least a dozen 6S batteries and like. It's not even. It's not even fair. <laughs> like it's. It's just like oh wow. Okay. Yeah. And thirty bucks is is. To, I, I will never pay forty dollars for an adrenaline battery. Um, that's just crazy in in my opinion. Um, and there's just not. I I yeah. There's just not a performance increase that I've been able to see. I need a receiver! Oh god, don't look at my belly. Or my balls. Where where did all the uh I bought like five fucking crossfire nanos. Where the hell did they go? Off a guy. I found a guy. Moving to Tracer and bought five. I think he said he was willing to sell me three more. Hey, here they are. Uh, what's the hot antenna set up for the, for the goat from the moon? Oh, it's, uh, it's down here, I think. Oh, man, this thing's gonna get in the way. Fuck. I didn't think that through. Can I move it forward, maybe? 
I'll probably move it forward a little bit. Didn't think it through when I mounted it. Uh, the the Moon Goat has these uh, slots for uh, zip ties for uh, Nacho Suarez with a, a really good question. I should be beaten with a stick for not having uh, talked about this yet. What components are in this build, he asks. Thank you, Nacho. Uh, <laughs> forgive me for just assuming that everyone could uh, magically intuit the... Uh, the parts and pieces in this build. Uh, so we've got a Akon AK32 35 amp ESC. Uh, that is my favorite ESC at the moment. It's, in my opinion, the best mix of price and durability and like not being so over overkill. Um, some people think that 35 amps is not enough. Uh, it's certainly been enough for me. Uh, I haven't had a single one of these things blow up from too much amp draw. And um, I fly pretty aggressively. And I crash pretty aggressively, which is really hard on ESCs. Uh, so, yeah. And, and uh, like Ryan Harrell, for example, of Mini Quad Test Bench, uh, he flies 25 amp ESCs. And it, it's, it's totally fine. Uh, we've gone, we've gone sort of off the reservation with the the amp ratings, uh, in the same way that that uh, megapixel ratings are completely useless in uh, digital cameras. It's a it's a number that everybody can understand. It's it's a number that's easy for people to use as a quantification, uh, and it's a number that in some cases matters but you can kind of uh, you can kind of beat the system in a way not beat the system uh, you can sort of game the system so that you build something that is shit quality that you can make a huge amount of profit off of that still says 700 megapixels on it um, it also seems like a way that uh, the, the, the gear manufacturers have been able to sort of band-aid uh, being able to make the rest of the ESC out of sort of shittier components. Um, the, the Akon ESCs strike me as being good quality components and then an a, a appropriate MOSFETs that with enough amp draw. Uh, whereas some of these other guys that are going nuts, 55 amp, 65 amp, um, sometimes it, it feels like they're, um, yeah, th they're able to just cram those crazy MOSFETs in there and the ESC won't blow up even though they can, they can shit out on the rest of the components. Um, chat is blowing up and I have to look up a, um, wiring diagram, so... I'm going to take a little breather from this build and hang out with you beautiful bastards for a minute. What do you think of that? Move the mic back over. That's how serious I am. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Crossfire Nano Wiring. And where's Oscar's page? So every time I have to wire up, seriously, every time, it's crazy that I haven't remembered it yet. Um, every time I need to wire up a Crossfire Nano, this is what I type into Google. I type Crossfire Nano wiring into Google, and then I click images, and the third image is Oscar Liang and this is the this is the highest up image where there's no confusion about TX and RX. Um, uh, I, don't, I, I don't really go here ever. I just look at the picture and it shows you that channel two all the way on the corner goes to the TX pad on the flight controller. Um, just 
yeah. Just to keep it simple, this is what I do and it works every time, so maybe do that yourself if you haven't memorized the fact that the TX, because everybody else makes it confusing by saying, hey, this pad on the, on the Crossfire Nano is the RX pad, and like, other manufacturers have not done that. They've gotten, they've said like, hey, this is the RX pad, you want to send this to the RX, or, or no, they'll call it the TX pad because they're trying to nudge you in the direction that they want you to put it on the TX pad on the flight controller and it, it, it can just get really confusing um so yeah uh, flight one is is the they're they're who i basically blame for it because they consider rx and tx to be the opposite um where on the the tx pad on their flight controller they're telling you that you need to that's actually the receiving pad but they're telling you that you need to hook that up to a TX pad somewhere else. Um, it's, it's just... If we don't... The, the, this hobby is going to get ruined if we don't start to fucking think about standardizing one or two things. Like, uh, we don't have to standardize everything all at once, but we have to start standardizing something. There has, there has to be a point where these fucking manufacturers all send each other a big email chain and go, hey guys, from now on, the RX pad on the flight controller is for receiving because that's what the R means. For example, just that, that's just one example. There's a million examples of a complete ass lack of standardization in FPV. And it's one of the reasons why FPV is such a fucking nightmare to, to try to learn and to try to get into is that without standardization, it's the wild west. And we're going to continue to wire things up wrong and blow shit up until these manufacturers get their shit together and do something that companies have been doing for eons. I don't know. I get pissed off because it makes my job a lot harder and it makes my life a lot harder to, to constantly see people that are just trying to get up in the air um, that can't because they did something that's totally logical but X, Y, or Z manufacturer had some other internal way of thinking about it. it used to happen in cars with... Um, but it was our own fault. We would we would mix parts. Uh, it would happen in airsoft a lot too. We would like try to find the best rear differential, the best rear sway bar, the best uh, uh, rear diff housing, the best rear upper control arms. And in doing so, you would typically not land on the same company for all of those, right? Steeda would have the best sway bar, but then Maximum Motorsports would have the best trailing arms, but then um, Coney would have the best, or Ford or, or Ford Racing would have the best upper control arms, um, and go. F and, and what would happen is each company would try to like tighten up tolerances in in some situations, right? Versus stock, so that everybody makes parts for the stock platform. Um, but then when you take three different people that are all tightening up tolerances in different spots, you try to put it together and nothing fits because everybody has, has tried to improve and everybody has made their, yeah. Um, but I take the blame for that. You know, like I'm the idiot that, that tried to find the best rather than just going through the Maximum Motorsports catalog and going, hey, it's all gonna work together. Uh, I think double A left. See you later, double A. Thanks for coming by. You're not here anymore, so I'm talking to myself. We're with the skateboard. Uh, been thinking of questions for tomorrow, and then I just went, nah, I'll just do it. So it's uh, natural and deleted everything. <laughs> and then instant regret hit me like a freight train. Well, you'll you'll be better at writing the questions down a second time. Um, from what I've been told from every single interviewer um, I've ever talked to is that it's really important to have. Even if you don't use them, um, just going through the process of thinking of uh, ahead of time and writing down 
uh, questions is a, is a really good idea. So I think you're on the right track, weirdo. Um, just, yeah, I mean, if nothing else, then just to have a backup. Because that th that's one of the reasons why I haven't done interviews yet is because... I don't think I'm very good at it, and I don't want to have, like, weird, like, uh, uh, what about, uh, uh, um, it's, it's a hard thing to do. Uh, so, yeah, um, every, everybody says be, like, over-prepared and have stuff written down and blah, 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 blah. So, you're, yeah, you're on the right track, in my opinion. Loon says, uh, have you ever seen any of my edits? I, I've played your edits on the stream. Uh, every flight is in the moment. If I had to go, uh, if I had to go pro, it would be way better. Uh, but for now, you guys get lazy DR, DVR edits. <laughs> Nothing wrong with DVR edits, man. All, all I had the ability to make for my first two year, years were DVR edits. Uh, and I didn't let that stop me. You know, that led me to, to quad camp and, and, uh, the thing that kind of kicked this all off. So, uh, you're never going to get any DVR hate here, that's for sure. Trice, because I, you know, try my best to not be a hypocrite. Tristan says, flew two packs, no issues, plugged in a third, only got first three beeps, no VTX, no radio, plugged it into beta flight, then plugged in a lipo, and it booted fine, uh, unplugged, and the problem was fixed. Uh, I've had that happen to me one time, Tristan, uh, and that rig never skipped a beat again. Uh, but for me, I slept on it. I, I, I remember it was really early in the hobby. Um, I'd been building and rebuilding and I, I, what I remember is that I built it and I was, I double checked everything. Everything was good. Like no questions. Same thing. Uh, plugged it in three beeps refused. Uh, I did it a bunch of times, tried a bunch of things. And I said, fuck, it was one of the times that I quit the hobby. And I said, fuck this, I'm done. I'm done with this hobby. Um, and I went to sleep, and I woke up, and I said, let me just try one more time. And I plugged it in, and it was fine. And the problem never came back. <laughs> so, ghosts, man, ghosts. Uh, which I hate. I, I absolutely hate that that happened and that I couldn't figure it out. But once it was working, it was like, uh, how do I troubleshoot this? And it just kept working, so I kind of couldn't. Uh, music just ran out. We're going to talk about the rest of the components. Uh, Nacho, because I just hit your question again here in trying to get caught up with the chat. But for right now, I'm going to get some more jams going. There we go. Um, we've also got an Akon F7 30x30 flight controller. Uh Immersion RC Tramp VTX, which is my preferred VTX, and it's only $30. Uh, this VTX in Joshua Bardwell's testing outperformed the more expensive Unify uh, in the higher race band channels. Race band 5, 6, 7, and 8. This was this had more output power. Uh, race band 1, 2, 3, 4, I believe it was. Uh, the $40 Unify had more output power. Uh, I've been running these Immersion RC Tramps for the whole time I've been flying. Uh, five inch rigs and they've been absolutely phenomenal. I've broken one or two from like huge horrendous crashes that like damn near broke them in half. I'm cool with that, fine by me. Um, and then uh, I'm doing a uh, Runcam Micro Eagle, which is still arguably my favorite uh, FPV camera. Although I, I, I sort of oscillate back and forth sometimes. And then uh, Crossfire Nano and T-Motor F40 Pro 4 motors, I think, in 2400, yep, 2400 kV that's, that I'm going to motor scale down for 6S. Um, nothing too exciting. Pretty standard sort of build for me. Uh, Feral FPV says best kV for 5.5 inch 5S. Uh, Feral FPV, I'm going to recommend that you run that you buy a higher KV motor that you need and then just motor scale it down in beta flight um, so that you don't have to like be locked into whatever this KV is that you choose. So I would actually recommend you getting, so you're five and a half inch on 5S. So I would recommend getting like, the, the, I think the manufacturers are starting to catch on to motor scaling because they're no longer offering like 1600 kV, 1700 kV, 1800 kV. 
the, the motor manufacturers are just doing like 1800 kV for 6S. And I think that's going to be perfect. I, I think you might actually end up running that at 100%. Um, but do this. Um, scale, motor scale it down. It's in the PID tab. It's right below the PIDs. Motor scale it down to like 90%. Um, just for your first like battery or two and then you can just dial it in um, to, to how much power that you want um, and my recommendation is always to try to use as little power as possible um, the less power you have dialed into the rig via motor scaling or just via K, the KV that you buy or the cell uh, size that you're running or the cell number that you're running um, the less power you have the more sensitivity you have on the throttle stick. And flying low powered rigs will literally make you a better pilot because when you move the throttle a little bit, the quad will only move a little bit. Big, huge power rigs, if you move the throttle a little bit, the rig jumps up into the air. So what you end up doing is just bouncing around and there's no better way to look like unprofessional and or new than to not be able to control your elevation, right? Like that's that is like the one thing that really separates in my opinion a pro pilot from a, a non-pro pilot or an amateur pilot whatever the hell you word you want to tag onto it um the ability to lock in you'll notice this now when you watch pro pilots videos they can lock into an elevation and stay at that same elevation without bobbing up and down like a drunk monkey <laughs> that's a new one I don't think I've ever used that double word score there before. Uh, Jack Hutchby, uh, I, we just talked about Ovonic batteries. Uh, Tiago says, the Mini Star line from China Hobby are like Tattoo R line, sensitive to discharge. Are they really? That sucks because they're not even lightweight. Uh, the Mini Stars are a heavy ass battery. If a battery is going to be heavy, it better be durable. Um, a heavy battery that's sensitive to discharge, in my opinion, is no good. Um, although the mini stars did pretty well in, in Joshua's testing, um, but his testing doesn't test uh, like lifespan of of batteries. Uh, Drone Pilot says I have a hundred dollar batteries for my seven inch quads, <laughs> and have saved the life of a couple packs by charging them as soon as possible after landing. Yes, uh, it's worked for me, but my warning is at three point six and critical at three point four. Um, yeah, guys, if you over discharge a battery, get your ass home and get that fucker back up above 3.5 per cell. Um, leaving it below 3.5 per, per cell pretty much guarantees that that battery is fucked for life. Um, so yeah, especially like if it's the end of your session and like your, for example, like your second to last battery, you over discharge, just go home. Just get the last battery would have been a disaster anyway because that's always when we lose our shit so just take that as a win get your ass home get that thing on the charger and get it back up to storage voltage at that point right but just get it up above 3.5 per per cell anything you have to do if, if there's something that you can do on site to make that happen do it um i've i've thought a couple times about getting a little a little charger um, that I can, in that scenario, right, I have one battery left. I think with the little toolkit chargers, I can take that last battery that I've got that's still charged, plug that into the back of the charger, plug the over-discharged battery into the front of the charger, and I think it'll, I can bring it up to storage voltage, right? I don't see why I wouldn't be able to do that, but, um, I'm not super intelligent when it comes to electricity so i uh like to leave those things up in the air and then magically you guys will give me the actual answer in the chat it's the magic of the collective uh slide by says tell us how you really feel <laughs> uh dingle says isn't the square pad on the crossfire the ground it is yep uh look at the picture again i mean it should be right that's usually what people do oh that's interesting it's not yeah usually people will use a squ the square pad uh, the square pad for ground, but in the Crossfire Nano's case, that is not true. Interesting. This picture, uh, well, okay, so apparently there are different versions 
of the Crossfire Nano. Some of which, the one here that that Oscar has, it's got the square pad down here on the diagonal from the uh, from the UFL, but this one here has the square even with the the UFL. I never noticed that. That is kind of annoying. Uh, on this one here, there are no square pads. <laughs> okay. All the pads are around on that one. Well, I thought maybe we were onto something, but... I, I, yeah. <laughs> Joan Pod says, I like when they standardized... Uh, when when they standardized standardized no battery positive on matter on mounting holes in some ESCs, I care not to mention. Um, yeah, that's still not standardized, drone pilot. Uh, I don't remember what it was, but there was an ESC that was produced in 2020 that sent voltage and ground through the goddamn uh, mounting holes. So there is there there's other um uh th there's a show on Netflix called The Repair Shop and if you don't watch this show go now um it is so satisfying and in that show there's an there was an iron worker that fixed uh not an iron worker a metal worker uh that was fixing this little this little mirror and the first thing he did is like look in this specific spot on the handle of the mirror and he was able to go all right so see look there's a there's the picture of a lion here and then there's the number three and then there's this other thing and he goes those three things tell me everything i need to know they tell me when it was made who made it and where it was made and he whips out this chart of th this standard basically like a standardization you know practices uh chart that's that's what we don't have. The, the closest thing that we have to that is a bunch of people complain about something, and then the and then the majority of the manufacturers will hear about that and stop doing it. But then there's always going to be a manufacturer that didn't hear about it, or they forget it, and they just don't do it. Like we we need like we'll never have it, but we need like a person or an entity that's willing to say that's willing to contact all the manufacturers and say, hey. I'm working on standardizing all this stuff. Do you want in? Believe me, you want in. And then like that person or entity or company or whatever has to, and it's a, it's a pain. It's gotta be a pain in the ass, right? Because like, not only do you have to create all that, but then you have to work with all these manufacturers ongoing as new things come up to, to keep that standardization up to date. It's, I'm sure it's a huge pain in the ass, but we really need it. We really do. Um, we probably will never get it. Uh, Tiago says, <laughs> why the fuck do we have a ton of VTX protocols? Um, VTX protocols, what do you mean? VTX protocols. VTX protocols. Why well, I feel very dumb right now. I can't figure out what a VTX protocol is. You mean like smart audio versus, uh, tramp audio? Yeah, that's what you mean. Um, we don't have that many though. It's, it's I mean, and it's, it's just because... None of the manufacturers want to work together on everything. They all want to do it their own way. That's really what I get. That that's probably gonna be the closest thing that we ever get to it. Is if these manufacturers ever get their heads out of their asses and realize that shitting all over each other is not the answer, um, and it and it's it, it just doesn't help anyone. Um, uh, Where do escaper says? I'm off again. Staying off this time. He's probably already gone. Talk to you tomorrow, brother, if you're not gone by now. Vicious Stitches says, well, what are your favorite props for 3-inch freestyle? I don't really have favorite props for 3-inch freestyle. I don't I don't love any of the ones that we've got. Um, the ones that I use are the Gemfan Wind Dancer 3028s and the Emacs Avan 3-inch props. Uh, neither one of those are as durable as I would like but they are uh, lower, they are the right pitch in my opinion, and they fly really good. 
Um, they just don't crash really well. Uh, I am really hoping that this sponsorship opportunity with GemFan will give me the opportunity. They've, they've already kind of said that it will, but I don't, yeah, I don't want to count my chickens before they're hatched. Uh, I'm really hoping to design, well, just tell them the specs for a proper three inch freestyle propeller. Uh, because yeah, the options suck right now in, in T-mount. Uh, in M5 nut, we've got the T-Motor 3140, which is goddamn brilliant. Uh, basically, that's all I want. All I want is a T-Motor 3140, which is made by Gemfan, uh, in T-Mount. Done. Don't change a thing. I, I think we can do better than that. I think that they can take the, the, the shape of the 5143.3 and shrink that down. Uh, because that's basically the blade profile that they've chosen on their 3016s, and I think it's why the 3016s are the best t uh, uh, toothpick propell propeller available. Uh, but that's just one man's opinion. Weirdo skateboard, uh, easy to break. Tramps, if you happen to, s <laughs> if you're sufficiently brain dead like me, he says. Frank says on circuit board slash chips, there's often a dot or square to indicate pin one. Pin one is often the ground. Yeah, usually, I I've noticed that. I've noticed that the square pads usually are the ground pads. Um, interesting that that's not the case in the picture of uh, the Crossfire Nano that Oscar Liang has on his website. Very interesting. Uh, and 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 now that I've seen this picture, I'm never gonna trust that ever again. <laughs> Um, Weirdo Escaper says, lick it, the ground will taste different. <laughs> that it will. Would you call that, would you call getting electrocuted taste, though? Uh, Drone Pilot says, I have two field chargers for me, both toolkit dual uh, channel chargers. That's my main charger. Uh, big ass 6S 20 amp hour battery. See, that's what I'd like to do, is, is get a, a big battery like that, but they're expensive. Uh, as the supply, and I get all the packs up to storage voltage after landing, don't wait for home. Yeah, see, that's, that's the right way to do it. Um... EE Doc says, see the XKCD on standards uh, to see why that never happens. Uh, it's 927. Uh, isn't there just two smart, smart Audio and Tramp? There are more than Smart Audio and Tramp. Those are just the two that, that we commonly use. Um, oh, yeah, there you go. Tiago just posted an SA1, SA2. Oh, yeah, that's right. Within Smart Audio, there's... Smart Audio 1.0, 2.0, 2.1, and then there's all like the specific ones. Um, yeah, I wasn't even thinking about that. Um, XKCD, huh, E Duck? Is it? I, I'm sure it's just impossible to get everybody to cooperate. I'm, I'm sure that's why. We're the skateboard. Uh, bet sometimes getting uh, getting someone killed someday, and then Frank says uh, standards comic. Please share it. Oh, X XKCD is standards. comic. Is that what they do? I'm post oh, wait, no, you just posted the link. What am I doing? <laughs> All right. Standards. How standards proliferate. See AC chargers, character encodings, instant messaging, etc. Uh, 14 competing standards, 14 ridiculous. We need to develop one universal standard that covers everyone, uh, everyone's use cases. Yeah, situation. There are 15 competing standards. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's hard to get everybody to cooperate. I'm going to leave this site up because I have a feeling that I'm going to like it. Uh, I'm getting really hungry, and I'm caught up on chat. Search again, uh, Google for Crossfire Nano Wiring and see image 5. Why, Nacho? Why? But Why? Image five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, right. The old and the new. It was right next to that. To the, it was probably on the same. Is it on the same screen? Yeah, it is. There it was. Staring me right in the face. That's right. Yeah, there were two different versions of the, uh, of the Crossfire Nano. Interesting. Okay, yeah. So the new version has that, has the square there. Good call. Good call. Oh, Hungry Songs. Um, 
Oh my god, it's been four and a half hours. Uh, that's a good place to end. Most of the build is actually done. All we gotta do is zip zap the, uh, the Crossfire Nano on there, and then we'll screw a bunch of screws in, and we'll be done. Uh, I guess I gotta throw the motors on there as well, but uh, that'll be easy. Thanks for hanging, you beautiful bastards, you. 65 people, look at that. Um, tomorrow, I'll do a stream. It might just be a video game stream. I might even stream again tonight. Some uh, some snow runner with Brad. I might not. It's it, it depends on on if uh, uh, Brad is uh, Brad hates people. Not in like a in a in a very loving way. Um, so he might not want me to stream with him on there, and that's totally fine. So maybe a fun little video game stream tonight. Maybe not. Regardless. There'll be something tomorrow. Greg Womack says, what about Owline batteries uh, you like? I have heard nothing but bad things about uh, the Owline batteries, which the real name, AU, stands for gold, for anybody that doesn't know it. So A the A-U-L-I-N-E batteries, they're actually, the, the real name is Gold Line. But I didn't connect the dots on that, so you kind of have to give that disclaimer every time that you uh, talk about Owline batteries which is frustrating, but um, yeah, I'm out of here. Thanks for hanging, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I don't know what I'll be doing tomorrow, I'll do a thing. And um, Sunday is gonna be Cinewoop Sunday uh, because I didn't get as much of the Cinewoop stuff done as I wanted to on Whoop Wednesday. So uh, Cinewoop Sunday coming at you on Sunday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, and then tomorrow we'll do a, a Patreon-only public while the stream is going on, but at the end of the stream it'll become Patreon-only. Um, something or other. Don't know yet. Maybe we'll finish this. Maybe I'll pee my pants. You'll just have to tune in and find out, you dirty bastards. I love you guys. Thank you guys for all the support today and every day. Um, every single one of you is making this possible, and that's super cool. Um, you guys should all feel good about that. Goodbye. Here comes some flying. Christmas rips. Okay. Come on. Don't. Oh, okay. Christmas rips. GoPro 0228. No, that's only 35 megs. That's me crashing immediately. Uh, that's 500 megs. More crashing. 300 megs. More crashing. Uh, 400 megs, more crashing. Here's one that's 1.68 gigabytes. Maybe there's more than 30 seconds of flying before I crash in this one. You're about to find out. Here comes some nonsense. Look at this. I'm even talking to the camera. Holy shitters. Here you guys go. Here's me talking to the camera. <laughs> Hopefully I don't say anything bad. See you tomorrow. What's up, everybody? I've got four hours all to myself. Hang on. This was, uh, this was Christmas Eve. 2019. Where is Epidemic Sounds? There it is. Pausing Epidemic Sounds. Goodbye again. What's up, everybody? I've got four hours all to myself here in Atlanta. Kristen is at the Korean Day Spa. Let's hit as many epic spots as we can. What do you say? You'll probably recognize this one. Let's do it. Ooh, shit.
<laughs> little front flip at the end there. Oh man, that's fun. What a ridiculous spot. Um, since this is the first spot, I'm gonna back off a little bit, call it there. Air mode is off for half of that flight. Other than that, on to the next.